Manuel Dallas, are you ready? It's prime time. $200,000 on the line. It's Championship Sunday here at the Call of Duty World League. This is going to be amazing. We are pumped to get it started. Behind camo. You, there's the camo, and there's the game. E United, knockout envious. There's three. He just needs Jerry now for the ace. He's wrapping the back. Give me all the kills. And we'll get the play from Quay. There goes the jump, though. The MPL jump, too strong. One versus one, 19 seconds He's left. Silly gets the kill. Let's go. With the smile, the three-piece T keeps on gunning. Oh, my God! From 100-plus teams, down to just two. The time has come. It is the CWL Dallas Grand Finals. Oh, this will be a special one. It's a rematch from the CWL Atlanta Open. To start, we've got to introduce the squad looking for back-to-back -back MLG titles. Give it up for E United. The leader of this team, the man with the white hair. Give it up for Silly. To follow his teammate that's been legendary all day long, putting up the big numbers, Pristini. Up next, his brother, who has been on point with the AR, ready to watch over his teammates, Arsides. And finally, our CWL Atlanta Open MVP, Gunless. E United last time beat this next team in the grand final, but, 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 at the CWL Paris Open, this squad made it look easy. The team challenging to take back the MLG title Optic Gaming! <laughs> to begin, he is the winningest man in Call of Duty history, the robot himself, Crim6. <laughs> to follow, the two-time world champion, the man looking for another title, Oh, he gets fancy with it, it's Karma! The next player on this squad, well, he's loved by one of the casters, it's kind of weird, but, 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 he's also one of the best Championship Sunday players of all time. Make some noise for Formal. Last but not least, with his people in the stands, the king himself, Skunk. Optic Gaming, E United, the majority of the $200,000 prize pool. The grand final starts right now. Matt, I am so pumped right now, and I want to take a moment to thank everybody who is here in Dallas with us tonight. This is the greatest crowd we have seen in Call of Duty yet. Yeah, it's been incredible this entire event, even for the, some of the open bracket matches in the morning. They've been extremely loud, supporting some of the best teams in the world.
really interested when this match gets underway. It's a little bit of a reverse roll from Atlanta. Now you have a United fighting out of the loser bracket, trying to force a second best of five against OG. Absolutely, it's a full roll reversal, but last time you remember, Opta came out of that loser's bracket. They were able to hit United with a hot 3-0. As Hawken is silly about it, he said, you know, after you win that winner's bracket finals, you have to just kind of sit there and wait. You're gonna cool off. I don't know if Optic Gaming, though, is going to be in the same position. This is a squad that is used to playing in championship matches. No, without a doubt. And, you know, Optic Gaming, they've had their eyes on E United since the beginning of the weekend. I was out talking with Scump a little bit earlier, and he, he, this is the one team they wanted to play. They have beaten everybody else, but in the biggest match that they've played so far this year, they did not get it done against E United, trying to right their wrongs now. There is a look at Optic Gaming's Crim 6. On the other side of the stage, it's one of the four players that was able to take him down back in Atlanta. Arsides, definitely going to be one of the key players for E United. They need another Atlanta-like performance from him in this event. But when we look at numbers, Matt, they are all positive. You look at Optic Gaming's win percentage, the KDs, they've all been ridiculous. Yeah, look, I mean, they coast through pool play. You know, you lose the hard point to Gosu Crew. But since then, it's been pretty difficult, Chris. I mean, Luminosity gave them a run for their money, goes all the way to a game five. Same thing with Splice. They're really only matched, they've blown somebody away in bracket play, was their last one, against FaZe. So I think against the United, you look at a lot of these stats, and you're like, oh man, Optic's so heavily favored. I would not say necessarily that is the case. 4-0 through pool play. Optic Gaming, your only undefeated squad. They've gone through some of the toughest competition you could ask for. Luminosity, Splice, the number one squad from Europe, as well as FaZe Clan, our number two team overall. But now they get a chance for redemption. They have another main stage matchup. They're going up against E United, and look at those numbers from Formal and Scump. They have been ridiculous in respawn all week. Well, I think actually it's been Search and Destroy that's been the key for this Optic Gaming lineup, and it's quite interesting. We talked about, you know, in the years past, how do you beat this OG team? Not gonna be able to take respawns. You gotta do it in Search. Now their most vulnerable game mode is that hard point. So you get two of those in a series, you gotta take this first series, kinda set the tone for the rest of your team. Optic Gaming just got onto the main stage. E United is switching up their seats, but they were able to just dismantle FaZe to get to this position. It's all going down. The Dallas Trophy is on the line, and I want to give a present to everybody out there who is in the venue. Thank you for showing up. We got the MLG merch, boys, tossing out some swag throughout this one. And the loudest fan out there, I'm giving away a brand new Team Scuff controller to them. That's right, get on your feet, Dallas. It's time to get this party started. And, and I would say with a team like United, the crowd is gonna be heavy, you No, know, obviously in favor of Optic. It may affect them, but you look at the crowd shots, you know, when we go to United, they, these guys are unfazed by anything. Always the same expressions on their face, cool, calm, and collected. And I think that all comes down from their leader and Silly. Optic Hex throwing out some Optic swag as well. We got a sold out crowd here in Fort Worth. It's time to party. Texas game number one. It's loading up in just a few moments. Matt, before we kick this one off, talk me through this first best of five. How do you see it playing out? Oh man, I mean, E United coming in hot. They've been playing really well today. I think this is a series that you no know, potentially you could see that second best of five, Chris. I think this series, you knowing our first one, has the potential to go four or five games. The fist bumps are down. It's time for our hard point. We're headed to breakout. You have a mistake, you're gonna get punished. You have a big play, you're gonna get rewarded here in our first hard point. And I know for E United, we've talked a lot about how great Silly has been in respawn game modes, and obviously the playmaker that Gunless has been. I think Arsides is the key for them in this series. If he plays a lot like he did in Atlanta, and you get that good play from Silly and Gunless, it's gonna be a very tough team to beat. So here we go, it's game number one. Remember, this is E United coming from a loser's bracket. Optic Gaming still without a loss. So E United has to beat them in back-to-back -back best of fives if they want to be crowned our Dallas champions. We're kicking things off. We got the king. It's Scumpy leading the charge with the K-Bar. See a lot of nades coming out from both teams off the rip. Not letting the opposing team get on top of this central hard point. It'll be two kills for Optic Gaming at the beginning. They're gonna get control. Scumpy looking for the shots, gonna find Silly. And it's been Optic Gaming winning your first round of gunfights. The scoreboard is starting to tick up, already 10 seconds and counting. 
Really, Matt, though, the next fight we have to look for is the battle for the cell block. Yeah, and off the gaming, they have the spawns for that second hard point. Krim picks up a two big kills in the middle of the map. But you just hear that OG fans, Chris, they are just so loud. They are fired up, trying to will this team to a championship. Krim 6 is heating up. Let's tune in with the Krim bot. I'm here in the back. Yo, yo, let me get, let me get points. Let me get points. Go, go, go. 225 from it. Playing kills with Are you coming in? Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm coming to help. Actually, fuck, I don't know. Yeah, we both are. You got med, right? You got med, right? Nothing right. Med, nothing right. Med, they might hit you, Ian. I'm coming yeah, I'm to you. Saying, no, three mid, three mid, three mid, three mid. Yeah, I'm going back mid. I got one, two more mid. Three mid, all the mid. All of them came in. Yeah, we spun that We spun that one. I have a trendy. I have a trendy. One's top, one's top. Top, top, top. One's on me. Green shot, green shot. Nice, nice. 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 In the back of me. Spiral in the back. Watch the back. Watch the back. Yeah. I got a trendy rocket. I'm going to put spiral. I got a trendy rocket. Top base, green. Weak, weak, weak. Two middle, two middle, three middle, three middle. I'm going back, I'm going back. Three middle, two more middle. One cart, two cart, two cart. Two cart. Two cart. Two cart. Three middle, three middle, three in. Three of them. Oh, I got one. 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 But the thing E United has to be worried about after that scump three piece is when will the score streaks come raining down from above? It's both formal and crimstick who have them ready. Yeah, if you're E United, you got to get on that central hard point when it comes back around or grave here early, bait these streaks out. But Optic playing strong here at the beginning. We talked a little bit about it. Need our cities to show up big currently at two and nine, not playing too great. And you think with E United, Chris, you know, the crowd is obviously heavily in favor of Optic. You know, things start to get going in their favor starts to make the game feel faster than what it is. Maybe you need an early rotation here, a good setup, slow the game down, talk about what's going wrong. Otherwise, this is just going to spiral out of control. If you guys watched our last event here in the U.S. that was back in Atlanta, E United able to take home that championship, and they were actually fueled by the negative comments, the doubters, the haters, the Optic fans who said they couldn't get it done. So despite the noise, we know that will not affect E United, at least in a negative way. Optic Gaming, though, they are feeding off of the positivity. You listen to that communication, nothing but positive thoughts. There's no frustration. They are steamrolling their competition up to this point. Yeah, you do force Optic to waste some embardment here, though. Arsides just gets out of the way, so they don't pick up anything with it. But Optic's going to take a good chunk of the rest of the commissary hard point. It's going to be very difficult for E United to get back into this one. They're going to need to get a full 60 on Cell Block. And even that, you're going to need to rotate to Grave and hold that one as well. Before you even move around the map, though, you have to think about what's going wrong in our gunfights. Look at these numbers. 10 and 6, 12 and 6, 11 and 7, and 13 and 8. Everyone plus 4, plus 5, plus 6. Optic Gaming is going in. Yeah, I mean, nobody you know, playing bad for Optic Gaming at this moment in time. We'll go back to that center hard point. It'll be Pristini inside for E United. You see they're putting a lot of emphasis on that lower side of the minimap. Obviously need that cell block when it comes up next. We'll see, though, they can get a good chunk of time here, maybe get close to the 80-point mark, and then you're in a good spot if you can hold cell block to make a comeback. Holding cell block is going to be crucial for E United. They are starting to come back in this game, but the kills up top will stop them from scoring. Optic going to be shut down. Gunless, the MVP from the last event in Atlanta, heating up now. He's working towards streaks, Matt. He's on a five kill spree right here. He just needs 225 more points to earn himself some rockets. So score streaks would be big if Gunless was able to get him because then you don't need to rotate early to grave. You can use him to break. You can take a lot of cell block. Now this is a big problem for E United. You see Optic Gaming, they have control of this next hardpoint, that side of the map. E United, they have to funnel through the front. Does not look good. 
Optic Gaming was off to a ridiculously fast start. They're starting to slow down just a bit. This next rotation is going to be huge, and Crim6 is going to make sure he uses his score streaks to fortify the positioning for Optic. They have perfect control of the cell block. Crim6 is scouting with the Scarab. He's not even looking for kills here. Now he's going to get aggressive, forces Gunless back, buys his team time to rotate over, and Skump is punishing them. Gets the opening two-piece. Crim will find a third. Yeah, just a smart play for Crim. You sit the Scarab there when players start coming over the top. You get them weak. You know exactly how many are coming to challenge you. Very smart play by Crim6. It's 28 seconds left on cell block. United cannot afford to rotate to the next hard point early. They have to play for this time. We're what, five minutes into this game and Optic Gaming is already knocking on the door. They could finish it right here, Matt. They have 15 points remaining. The next hill is gonna be at the top of the map and we've seen what they can do at Graveyard. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe they have some score streaks left. I believe Formal's on a little bit of a streak. Same with Skump. You may have some score streaks to end up breaking this for OG. And here comes down the missiles from Formal. He's only going to get one with it. But he uses those missiles, and nobody's there to follow that up. So at United, you have to be pretty uh, no confident that you're going to be able to hold this hard point now. The twin brothers, Pristini and Arsity, getting slaughtered in the game so far. Negative 11, negative 9, both double negative at this point. They need to heat up in the second half or at least start thinking about it in search and destroy. Optic Gaming looking to finish strong. They continue to score already at 215. We will see at least one more hard point though. Yeah, and if you're Optic Gaming, you want to just keep E United where they are in the score. Really set the tone for this series. Let them know it's not going to go like how Atlanta went. Formal's going to hit the long range shots. Finishes off our city. Skump protecting them during that whole time. Fantastic teamwork coming in. The Bash Brothers, it's five streak for Formal. Skump was just on a four streak. They are nine points away. They've rotated first. It's Karma set up to seal the deal. Set up inside commissary. Nobody even close for E United, Chris. This is going to be a game one win for Optic Gaming. What a start to the championship match. Optic Gaming putting E United in the 100 point club. They hold them to just 67 points on breakout. You can't ask for a better start to this best of five. That was ugly. I mean, you can't even really take much from the E United side of things because they just played really poorly in that first game. If you're over on the United side, you're their leader, silly. You just got to delete that game from your memory. Just tell everybody else, focus on this search and destroy. You definitely need that second map. Optic Gaming, they won the first few rounds of gunfights. They got off to a 60-0 lead. They got streaked out. They stopped every attempt from E United on the rotations. Everyone picking up the crucial kills when it came down to a 1v1 battle. And at the end of the day, there was just no answer to the slaying power from Formal and Scum. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was trying to do some of the math in my head. And you kind of looked at that first half of the game when E United is over at Soblock. They get like 10 points through the next four hills. So 40 points out of the remaining four hills left in the game. That is a pretty poor hard point play from E United. All right, game one's done. Don't ever think about it again, E United. Now you need to start thinking about search and destroy. You need some strong players to step up and make big plays. And you got to stop the Clutch Kings, Karma and Crim6. Definitely a dangerous duo when it comes to search. The thrill of victory has become quite familiar over time. And nobody knows it as well as I do. The money, the fame, the feeling. They say it's more difficult to stay on top than it is to get there. The thing is, I've been on top for years. I've always approached situations with one idea in mind, that I will do anything I need to do to win. Over time, I've watched veterans fall, old teammates turn into rivals, and new players entering the spotlight. I've won under different organizations with multiple teams and at tournaments across the globe. Yet the pressure to win is even greater than it was before. There will always be those who attempt to take my title, but there's only one thing stopping them. I'm not done yet.
That's the real Crim6 voice, the Crim bot, as they call him. We will see. Will he be able to live up to the numbers he's been dropping all week and long? A 1.5 in S&D is absolutely ridiculous. He's running for the top spot in search. I mean, he's been excellent in search and destroy. And I feel like it's a little bit, you could have said a knock on him, you know, the previous few events, just because he gets, you know, Krim gets in a mode where he just finds a strat, finds a spot, that's where he likes to go. And I feel like, you know, you put him in different positions now, he's really engaged in search and destroy. And he had a lot of the players saying this weekend, he's the best S&D player in the game. One of the best S&D players, if not the best, rated. You just lost your title, buddy. It belongs to Krim now. Will he live up to the hype here as we go into our next game? Throwback will be our second map. Matt, this is something that we've seen from both of these teams. Expectations after watching both squads fight on this same game mode. So I think you kind of look back to the series in Atlanta where they played this exact map in the second series, that final game five. You know, RCD's versus Formal with the sniper rifle. RCD's got the better of Formal in that matchup. We saw Formal earlier doing some nice things with the sniper rifle. Look for him to bring it out. RCD's with the sniper was so fun to watch back at Atlanta. Pristini also going to be a key player in this one. The Twins were not able to get much momentum. They weren't able to get a whole lot of positive things going in that first game. They've shook it off, though. They're talking it over with Silly. What is the game plan? How do we take down Optic Gaming? When we look at the matchup here, for me, you got to keep your eyes on Gungless as well. That camo could be absolutely crucial in search. We've seen it time and time again this weekend. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have camo, any game mode, you can make just huge plays with it. We've seen Gungless suit in search and destroy a lot. This is actually the first time where you've seen E United. They look like visibly frustrated. Like they're just kind of looking down the line, talking to each other, you know, biting your nails, maybe the nerves setting in. Got to wonder how they're going to come out here in game two. The crowd is stacked against you. The other team on the other side of the stage just blew you out in a first game. This is where the mental strength will shine. Can E United wipe away the past and start new here? They could tie up our first best of five series. Keep in mind, Optic Gaming, all they need to do is win three games in this first set. The tournament is done. E United, they'll have to win three, force a second best of five, and it is not going to be easy. We're loaded up right now, Matt. We're headed to throwback, and I have a feeling we're about to see some sniping. Yeah, you're definitely going to see snipers from both sides, and look for Pristini as well outside of the snipers. Now, Pristini did a good job in the Atlanta match, just getting behind enemy lines, really making Optic think, you know, where is he coming from? All different angles. Look to see if Pristini can get something going. United was giving so many props for their ability to trade, their speed at which they play Infinite Warfare. Look for the run and gun play style to come into play. Pristini already up in Optic's face. He gets the first pick, half health, still challenging a second player. Formal is out of the action, and Optic is falling one by one. Look at that. All of a sudden, the round is over. E United coming out on top. That's the start you needed. Absolutely. A very strong round from E United. They need this map. Obviously, the series not over if they lose this one, but you can kind of see the writing on the wall if Optic goes up 2-0. Our cities and the crew getting ready for the next round. Silly just barked out the orders. Let's see how they set up on defense. Optic Gaming is going to be on the attack. Bomb in the hands of Karma. And Formal putting away the sniper rifle. Instead, choosing to go middle of the map with a K-Bar. No one saw that one coming, especially Pristini, who gets caught while throwing a nade. Yeah, trying to get those players out of position in the middle with the grenades. Not able to do so. Formal peaks at the perfect time. Able to take out Pristini. But here comes Gunless through the middle of the map. This is all on him to open this up for United. And there's only two of them left. It's Gunless and Silly now. It was a 2v4, making a 2v2. Scump, last one standing as Arsenies will trade, and just like that, a 2v4 clutch. Gungless getting three of the kills. He's 4-0, added a fuse to that. He is going to be about a kill and a half away from getting that camo. That is huge. You get camo this early in a game, obviously, you know, maybe one, two kills away. You potentially have it, you know, maybe round four, and I think if Optic wins one of these next two rounds, you use that camo early, because you can see this S&D going, you know, 10, 11 rounds. You think Gunless gets it back? Optic Gaming, we've seen slow starts from them in the past. You think back to their matches against Luminosity. Even when down 4-2, 5-3, they're able to bring games back. So never count them out. But this is the start you are looking for if you're an E United fan. Silly's going to lead the charge up top. Doesn't see a challenger yet. Grenade goes out. He knows someone is there. Will he be able to punish Krim? 
They do get two kills, though, at the beginning. Silly just looking over his teammates, letting them run through the middle of the map, cause a lot of chaos. It's push Formal all the way back here behind Lemon. And Formal knows a pinch is coming. Oh, he yeah. just doesn't know which direction is going to hit first. Formal was watching Crim's back as he turns his attention to the right. Pristini, so aggressive, so sneaky, gets in there, picks up two kills in this round, and will seal a third straight round now for E United. It's very impressive the previous round, too. I mean, Silly and Gunless, you know, in that 2v4 scenario, they're able to clutch up there. You now, after getting blown out in game number one, it seems like E United has shucked that off, getting into game number two. The smiles are back, Matt. They're not arguing anymore. You saw a big smile from Arcides. These guys are getting back in this series, and it's on the back of Gun with 6 and 0, Pristini 4 and 1 as well. Both players playing incredible through our first four rounds. Silly will pick up two before Krim shuts him down, but now it's Krim once again alive as the last man standing. He needs a 1v2 clutch here. Dan Gunless invests the camo into this round, starting off 7 and 0. You like that, potentially go up 4-0 here. You may not even need to use it yet again to close this game out. Fully Krim. streaked out as well. Did you see that? Yeah, Krim searching for more players. Knows he has to get towards bomb. 45 seconds left. E United just need to body stack here. Oh, but Krim gets one, and he's going to get away with his life. Not great here for E United. Bomb is still down. The pressure is on Krim, and Gungless is going to win that one. Frustration. It's clear. Krim hitting the fist bumps, though, trying to shake off that round. But they are in a deep hole at this point in the game. Oh, it's as good as Krim could have played that. I mean, he goes right over the top of Gunless. He just comes back and picks the wrong way to look. Looks left, thinks he's coming out of the top window. He's right underneath him, and Gunless wins that fight. The ERAD paying huge dividends. The SMG being used by Gunless. He's been playing fast and furious. Pristini, he's been switching up his weaponry. Keep your eyes on Gungless, though. Will more streaks come out? It's Scuppy winning the opening fight as all the grenades hit down low. Pristini trades it out with Karma, three on three. You do have Silly right on top of Bomb here. Not going to have the streaks from Gungless left to 1v3. Optic Gaming will be able to converge on Silly and take him out. All the kills going down in 15 seconds. Silly, the last man standing, was simply pinned. Optic swarms them, they're on the board. Well, you know, now on defense for E United, you do have these streaks. Optic's not going to be able to just walk right up onto Bomb, plant it down, and then just kind of sit in your normal positions. You're going to be able to streak them out. So I feel like Optic, they're probably going to get a little bit aggressive here. Optic so good at tracking what streaks are on the board. You know Karma's been talking about it the last few rounds. They're aware of Gunless's 8 and one start. Crim6 from inside is looking for an opening pick. As soon as they take out Gunless, though, map, that will free them up. They can start moving around the map, but you got to stop this man's ERAD first. Nine and one, Gunless finds first blood again. Yeah, that top window is such a power position, Chris, that when they allow Gunless to get to the middle of the map with the ERAD, jumps up, challenges the assault rifle player. It's a really easy gunfight for him to win. It's going to result in another. Oh, oh my okay. goodness, Karma. All right, yeah, he's finally digging out. Arceus comes off the wall run before things got a little bit too scary. They'll be 5 1 E United. They still have the full streaks of Gunless to work with. They're in a great spot to take map number two. Our city's in your round ending kill cam. The twins are back. Gunless is on point, and they are about to tie this game up. E United needing just one more round. They have five to work with. You know, game number one, obviously, E United gets blown out, but sometimes to recover from that is easier than to recover from a really close game where you kind of gave it away in a close position. Silly uses FTL, jump, dies pretty quick there, getting on top of the bus. Krim able to take him out. Pristini answers with a kill, formal with a two-piece. Just like that, Gunless, the last one alive. Yeah, and if you're Gunless right now, you just save these streaks. You don't try and be a hero. Finish strong, play smart. You have lots of time to work with here. You're one round away. Take your time. Eventually, Optic is going to slip up. Yeah, you're playing the long game if you're United. You have a ton of utility. You're probably going to get Camo back at some point. I do think maybe you consider investing one of the streaks into this round. You lose it. Then I think you kind of play for the long, you know, 10-round game where you may have to save one of those streaks for later. Keep your eyes on Gunless. Let's see how they attack. It's going to be Optic Gaming going down low with that bomb. Gunless and the rest of United doing a four-man stack at the top of your map on A. 
or B rather, they're looking for a retake strat here, Matt. No, what I think they're going to do actually here, Chris, is they're setting up at this bomb site because they know they can streak out the opposing one. That's the easier bomb site to streak. So they stack that bomb site at the top of your mini map. They're going to rotate down back towards the bottom. You should see at least maybe one streak invested here. Bomb is down. Here come the streaks. Karma dips under the bridge. Formal and Karma picking up your first two kills. The last rocket will pick up two. And now you're going to see Arsenis in the feed as well. Great use of the streak. Skump in a one versus two scenario to keep Optic alive here. He's going to get one. It's going to force a 1v1 here versus Arsenis. Knows exactly where he's playing. Smart play by Skump to back down. Arsenis has him spotted, and Skump has him outgunned. The clutch keeps him in this one. The streak was used. Bombardment still available, though, for E United. So you're not safe yet. It's a good strat from E United. They just get first blooded. The streaks come in. You're able to get two with it. But Skunk just clutches up there in a 1v1 scenario. So here's where things get interesting, because now you're going to have optics payloads start to come on the board. How do we see them use that reactive armor and active camo they're going to get? So you have Skump with this reactive armor. Maybe he challenges mid-map. If you're Optic, obviously, I think you need to invest one of these into this round. Karma tagged up with some grenades. The hit markers will give up his position, but he sees the bomb planter. Can't finish Pristini. Nades coming in. Skump will pick up your first blood, but Pristini answers back with the kill on Krim6. Three up for both teams, 35 seconds left. This bomb needs to be defused. Pristini protecting it. Last man standing, can he clutch? Formal is in the air, and Formal will get the kill. E United slowly but surely allowing uh, Optic uh. back in this game. E United invests reactive armor into that one. Same with Optic, but they don't come out on the winning end of it. So now you're just down to the bombardment on the side of E United. We'll have to check. You have Formal with FTL jump. We saw what he did against FaZe and that 1v1 against Clacer with it. Then we'll have to check with Karma, see how close he is to active camo. The green wall coming to life in the crowd. Optic Gaming, they will once again give Karma the bomb. They're looking for Formal or Skump to get your opening pick. Arsenis is going to challenge on a big flank here. No one's going to be looking this direction. Three players with their backs to him. He picks up the first two. Formal answers back, but it's all going down. Krim and Formal keeping Optic in this. And they somehow force a round 11. Oh, this is painful to watch. E How United. did this happen, Matt? E United has control of this S&D match. And it is all falling apart. Round 11 coming up. We talked, maybe Gunless gets camo again. Does not look likely. Karma, very close to camo. You do have the bombardment on the side of E United as well. They will be on the offensive side of things. Gunless opened up this game 9-1. and one. He's 12-6 and six right now, and he's putting this bomb he down actually, to get this camo. So he actually used it, so he doesn't have that anymore. So that's really bad for the side of E United. Only has the Scarab. Look how Optic is playing this as well. They are going to have to react. Gunless didn't see anybody. Pristini makes the call. They're all over here. He will fall first. Optic Gaming with first blood, but the time is ticking down. They have to get to this bomb with seven and a half seconds left on the clock. See how they're going to attack this. Looks like Formal waiting for his teammates in the back to make a play, and it's going to be Skump and Karma coming over the top. It is just silly alive for E United. What just happened? One, Optic Gaming comes storming back, and you see the choke sides. They're in the crowd, they're on the stage. Skump letting them know. Oh man, when we got to that round 11, and I actually saw Gunless had used that bombardment, they did not have anything left that could save them. They did not get camo the second time. The round they use reactive armor, they lose. You lose a lot of those rounds using the streaks as well. They had all the ammo, just not able to close it out. How do you stop Optic Gaming at this point? What a ridiculous return in the second half of Search and Destroy. Matt, what is it about Optic Gaming? How many teams could have pulled this off? I mean, not many. And I, I think also there's a side where E United kind of really gave that one to them. I mean, you have all that utility. You have you no know, potential to get camo twice. You have a bombardment. You have the Trinity Rockets. You have reactive armor. And you still cannot come up with one round win. 
you have all that utility when you have five rounds on the board already. You got to close it out. The coach and Matt died a little bit during that game. Someone needed to be in E United's ear. You will not get a better game out of Gunless. At least not a better start than what he had in this one. A 1.71 overall, but it's formal at the end. Clutching up with a big 1v2. Scump coming up big with a big clutch as well. Optic Gaming mounting a ridiculous comeback now on match point. It's all coming up when we return live from Texas. Don't go anywhere. This is the CWL Dallas Open. Welcome back. It is prime time. This could potentially be the final game of the CWL Dallas Open. Optic Gaming going up against E United in our grand final. And it's taken E United a long road to get here through the loser's bracket. Trying to be back-to-back -back MLG champions. They're on the brink of elimination here, Chris, but their best game mode so far this weekend has been up. Absolutely. E United always plays Optic Gaming tough. But this event, Optic Gaming is making it so hard for them. E United, though, you got to keep in mind, they were able to bounce back in previous series. They had a big loss to FaZe in the winner's bracket. They take out Envy. They take out Splice. They get revenge against FaZe. Coming up next is Uplink. They have a 66% win rate on this game mode. This is where you have to start the comeback tour. And it's going to be tough. I mean, I've lost a, a decent amount of games in MLG events, and I can remember some brutal losses. Like, ones like the ones that you're close to winning are so much worse. Like, I cannot stress that enough than getting blown out like 250 to 60 like that first match. Like, those are the hardest ones by far to come back from. And they are right on the brink of taking game number two, and they they trying to choke that one away. That is our E United Road to the Championship presented by Ghost in the Shell in theaters March 31st. But it is time now. Game number three will be loading up in just a few moments, and there are two players we want everybody out there in the crowd to keep your eyes on. Matt, who are our G Fuel key players? matching up here. Yeah, we're going to have Formal on the side of Optic Gaming. We know the things he's done all tournament long, and then Silly on the side of E United. A much different role he's playing on this team like than he did in Atlanta. You know, Atlanta, a lot of great search and destroy play, kind of supported in the response. He's come up big in terms of KD in the respawn game mode, specifically Uplink so far this weekend. But these guys have a nice rivalry going on. Don't know how it started. It started somewhere in the H chat. Don't know because I'm not in the H chat. But no, you do see some animosity towards each other. I love to see that. I think we need more rivals like this in COD. Absolutely. And, you know, Formal even said it after the last time they played. You know, I gained a lot of respect for the other three. But Silly, I'm still not impressed by him. Well, look, I mean, Silly has definitely impressed me this weekend. I thought his play has been great. A lot of questions about E United coming out of ESWC did not have the greatest of performances there. That I think, you know, it was very important that they came out, had a good showing here going into the Global Pro League, and Silly's their leader, and he's shown up. Here's a look at your top 10 leaderboard. Formals 1.32 will top the list. Skump comes in at number 10, and keep in mind, Silly is right behind Skump at number 11 with a 1.15. Yeah, you look at some of those numbers, you know, four or five games, not a ton of games on stream, but no Scump and Formal outside of Mad Cow to play the most uplink games. No seven you saw there. So those stats definitely matter. Here we go. If you're an E United fan, it all has to start right here. If you're an Optic Gaming fan, you're hoping they can close it out right now. We're headed to the precinct. Who is going to be able to lock this one up, Matt? Give me the prediction. Does Optic end it right now? Uh, I, I think you'd be ridiculous to say they don't. I think United is a fantastic team. They fight hard, but just so much momentum in this series. The entire room and crowd going up against them. I think it's going to be real tough for United. Dallas, Texas, get on your feet. Show some love for these eight players. This is the grand final. <laughs> wow. And to open things up, it is four straight kills for E United. They're looking to punish. Maybe it's not going to be difficult for E United. Ah, oh, as I said that. That was a pass, Matt. They missed the one point throw. They are not going to get points out of that. When you are down in a series like this and you need a momentum swing and you get four dead off the beginning, you cannot miss that throw. The nerves seeming to affect E United. 
They blew game two after getting demolished in game number one. The communication has absolutely been on point for the green wall. Let's listen in once again with Optic Gaming. Let's go. Oh, back. Oh, watch your, watch your back there, Matt. You're going to die from back there. Oh. I just got one. one. Yeah, one's pushing. Push, 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 push. Ball guy, ball guy, ball guy. He's going to challenge. He's going to challenge. He's going to keep challenging, dude. They're going to keep giving up. Top glass, top glass. 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 He's pushing. Top glass is pushing. Wait, yeah, yeah. Gunless, gunless, gunless. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting up. Oh, he's statured. Yeah, sorry. Come on, man. No, he's just in there. He's just in there. Weak, dude. Weak, 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 I'm going back there. Chili, Chili, you gotta win that. Chili, you gotta win that. Nice one. Grab ball, grab the team. I got gun. I got gun. Let's get this. 2v1, 2v1. Let's get this. 20, 20, 20. I got it. 20 point. 30 point. One going orange, one top. I'm holding that one. Yeah, they're gonna be one here, man. Yo, two glass, two glass, two glass, guys. And Chris, when I hear that listening, the one thing that I kind of honed in on is Karma's one in six at the time we go into that. And you know, knowing him from the past, that when he starts off slow, sometimes gets in his own head, he's calling out the entire time, setting up plays for his team. When you have him that engaged, you're going to get great results. I was telling him backstage before this match, one of the most impressive things about his gameplay here in Texas has been his small talk. Every single call out matters. He makes sure his teammates are always aware of the close is threat. Now we see Optic Gaming trying to get drone here in the middle of the map. They did have a pinch going on. They had one player on the bottom of the minimap. He dies. Krim up here in kind of no man's land has to be careful. He doesn't get out of position because see, now the drone on the opposite side of the map. United knows Krim's behind him. They have to attack towards that bottom side pretty fast. Optic unable to chase down this drone yet. RCD's looking for a big two piece. Instead, it is Formal and Scump holding strong. Pristini desperately trying to slow down Optic Gaming, allowing his teammates to come off the respawn, help support. Pristini's going in, Silly's in the feed as well. Only one up for Optic, this is their chance. But the drone was reset, too much time sitting alone on the ground. Can they still force this one through? Yeah, and they're not gonna bring it towards Statue. They're gonna try and go down towards Construction. And Silly, the only one alive, has drone in hand. He has been spotted, but he's going to make it around the corner. Not enough life to get off a one-point throw. Some good defense there from Optic. Karma's green arrow was hidden by that uh, uplink objective logo, and I thought that Silly was about to slip in. Instead, though, it is a 1-0 lead for Optic Gaming. We have a minute 25 seconds left on the clock. This is just our first half. Here comes another one-point play, and this time it's E-United tying things up. Yeah, it's a good play from E-United. They get back to mid-map. They have a lead blocker. They're able to settle for a one-point play there. But realistically, they should be up 2-1. In a game of this magnitude, you cannot have those small mistakes like they did earlier. If someone touched that drone a little bit earlier, this could be a 4 to one game. We're going to see what's going to happen here as Karma jumps it in. That's only a one point play, though. He died before his body was able to make it in. Yeah, maybe another sliver of life, and that would have been a two point play there for OG. But you have RCs doing a lot of work here, setting up in mid map, currently on a two streak, trying to lock this position down. And now they have the drone up towards this top statue. But the only thing that's a problem for Reunited is that Optic Gaming just has more players funneling towards this angle. It's going to be difficult for them to win these trades, but. They say that. Silly picks up a big two-piece. Gunless comes in, picks up the other two. This should be points. We talked about Silly being a key player. He gives them this opportunity, and they will make the most of it. Gunless drops it in for a second point. We're all tied up with 20 seconds to go. E-United will not go down without a fight, man. After that game number two and game number one, a lot of teams would have folded right now, though they are bringing it to OG in game number three. See Formal here. Trying to throw the drone down for some yards, trying to pick up some kills before he can push it forward. He gets taken out. We're going to go into half number two, tied. I'm so impressed by E United. They do not fold, as you mentioned, even after a great start and a failed toss. They don't let it get to them. They play strong defense. They fight Optic strong here. We're going into a second half, and I feel like, honestly, it's E United who may have the momentum now. Uh, well, you know, I think how they start off here in the second half is going to tell you a lot. I mean, they're now on the preferred side where we see a lot of teams, they can get spawn trapped in that back alley. They get off to a good start, rally together some scores. They can definitely take this game three. Gungless on your screen was ridiculous in search. 19 and 15 to open things up in our first half 
of Uplink. Oh, this isn't good. Zoe is going to see uh, the drone running right past him. Karma's wall running. There is one player to stop him. Gunless is there. The shots can't land in time. Gunless was looking beyond Karma, found Formal, but did not stop the drone. A two-point lead now for Optic Gaming. And that was really weird at the beginning for E United because they send two players a drone, two players on that bottom side of the minimap. And then for whatever reason, whoever picks up the drone, goes over towards that top statue, just gives it to two players on Optic Gaming, and they just run right in for a fast break. One point play though, Pristini able to make it work. Despite losing Silly, the lead blocker, he hits a long range shot. Skump is gonna accidentally clean up Karma, but the kills are still being scored by both sides. Who is gonna get control of the drone next? This is a one possession game, a single dunk puts e United back in charge. I think e United needs to focus on getting the drone, bringing it out to statue, and pushing up towards that top ticket area. You see they're picking up kills in that area right now. Now they're going to try and go on the offensive towards this top ticket. It's going to be Silly leading the charge. Down goes Silly. Camo is out, though, for Gunless. He's bobbing, he's weaving, he's jumping, he's in. Five to four, a great two-point play. He is so good with active camo. Every time you see him pop it in uplink, it results in a two-point play. And those abilities, man, so powerful. Swings things in United's favor. Gunless is playing ridiculous this event. 24 in 19, he is the lead slayer. He has the most points for his squad. Everyone needs to keep the kills on the map, though. Can e United answer back here in a game three and force another hard point? Let's listen in with their communication. Yeah, there's 20 back alley, there's 20 back alley. I got one, I got one. Made it way home, made it way home. Kill this guy. I could go right. I could go right. Oh I could go right. One's, one's right. 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 Wow, you're better. Than right, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to play ball hard. Play ball hard. Play ball hard. We don't have right. I got you. You gotta love the polite trash talk from Gunless. Wow, you're better. And I think uh, something interesting when you listen to E United, obviously you've done listen-ins for years. You know, in these big matches, usually you hear a lot of like frantic communication as Optic goes in for a two-point play to bring it within one. But those guys just really calm. Not a ton of communication there. For a tough flight team, it's really interesting how they get that done. You're feeling pretty confident with a three-point advantage, but now it's just a one-possession game once again. 90 seconds left on the clock. United, they're burning their payloads as well, trying to force through another one-point toss. The drone not going to be going in this time, Matt. It's too far back. It's cleared off the map by Formal. Yeah, United actually misses a one-point throw there. But RC is coming around the outside, trying to get control, not able to do so. But that is another one-point miss for E United. The drone gets reset, and Krim with overdrive, trying to bring this one in. Krim using the payload, and he's going to top it off. That's a one-point play. We're all tied up. And that's really smart, because now for Optic Gaming, you have reactive armor, you have camo. You do not need to force a two-point play out of that overdrive there. Now, in the last few seconds of this game, you want those two abilities. You have both of them. This one, OG, just needs to go back towards mid-map, try and get drone control, get the, hand, the ball in the hands of either Karma or Skunk. This one's going to come down to kills. Who is going to be able to get two, maybe three down and force a last-ditch effort toss off? There it comes. It's United. They will take the lead once again. Optic Gaming not out of this one yet, but they have to act fast. You did see Skump use the reactive armor there, trying to hold down mid-cut. Not the gaming will be able to get the drone in their hands and get it out towards top statue. Formal is able to get one. It's a 3v3, only nine seconds left. You see the camo being caught there. I believe you do have the drone. Oh, Karma actually forgot to get the drone. I thought he had it in his hands. Going for a one more in the end. Oh, not gonna connect. He picks up the drone a half second earlier. He hits that wall run with camo. That's a one point play. Karma needs steroids, man. Just short on the last toss. 
E United, they are still alive. And I am so impressed by this young squad. They came out of nowhere this year. Yes, two of the players were at COD Champs last year, but really it is infinite warfare where they are making a name for themselves. Yeah, and in the final seconds there, we caught it through Formal's POV, but you can see Karma in front of him with that camo. He slides to where the drone is, and then he starts to move back, just did not slide on top of the drone fully. That's why he has to go back, takes another second to pick up the drone, and then hit that wall run. Karma got things started early for Optic Gaming with the first one-point play, working with Krim6. Then, of course, it was E United battling back at the half. Very close, E United pulling away, though. They were able to miss a shot, finish off a dunk. They'll go up 7-4. Optic Gaming somehow tied it up at 7. And then at the very end, E United snuck in and made it 8-7. Yeah, and you see, you know, with winning that game three, going to another hard point, E United, they're definitely not going to come out and play as poor as they did in game number one. Ah, uh, the pressure on Optic Gaming if they can force a game five. This is going to be a hell of a match. We have at least one more map. Let's hear from our analysts. Guys, what are your thoughts on this one? Thank you very much, Chris. We have the best seat in the house for this grand final, that is for sure. Uh, we're all obviously enjoying it, very much so. But for E United, I mean, I, I want to go straight to the game two, the search and destroy, because game one, it was a lot to a little, let's be honest. But map number two, you have a 5-1 lead, Merc. I mean, what went wrong? I, I mean, I like what they did early on. You know, they used their payload abilities to s sort of use that advantage, gain an early lead, but then they had full streaks. Just go to that A bomb site, plant the bomb. They just didn't use their streaks effectively. They made the game much harder on themselves. United crumbled in that map number two because they gave up to gaming that 2-0 lead. However, game three, we saw a little bit of life memo from United. Yeah, they started super, super strong. I mean, they got four down. Teep kind of looked at me and was like, hang on, they're going to start here. <laughs> and then they missed that one point play, and it's something they couldn't do. You know, we, we see Optic Gaming bounce back, and it was back and forth, but those are the game-changing moments. Absolutely. Eventually, they close it out. They take that up, uh, that uplink as well. Uh, but for me, E United just to regain from that loss on Search and Destroy, I'm actually really impressed. TP, looking forward now in this first series, is there any way E United can force that game five? I think anything's possible with these guys at this point. For them to get smashed, absolutely smashed game one, a devastating collapse of, of a comeback on that game number two. For them to come out and win that game number three in pretty tense fashion, I think they're gonna be okay here. And uh, it can't be as worse as that first hard point, right? So <laughs> just going true. off of you know what should happen, <laughs> I think they have a pretty fair shot in this hard point. Well, the grand final, of course, in full swing. Up to gaming, E United. Game four about to get underway. We can set it back down to our casters. Thank you so much, fellas. Game four is loading up. And as we all look back to the first hard point, yes, it was Optic Gaming devastating E United. They put them in the 100 point club, allowing just 67 points on the board. But it's not always been like this. The first time these two teams matched up, the HPs were much cooler. I would be absolutely stunned if you see a result like that again. I do not think that is on the table. I think, you know, you look at this E United team, so much composure. The thing that I love about it is. Just four guys just don't give a damn. Doesn't matter if the crowd's against them. Doesn't matter how much they're down. It's like, let's just play the next game. Let's just keep moving on, moving on until we get the result we need. I think it takes, you know, it tells a lot about the, just the makeup of a team to have that much composure going into game three after blowing a game two that bad. Making a career playing games. These are the best Call of Duty players in the world. E United looking for their second trophy. The players going over any last strategies before this hard point kicks off. Matt, this is a map that is played in almost every single practice scrim. What do you expect to see as we head to throwback for another hard point? I know throwback, you're definitely going to need to see e United do a better job focusing on those money hills. When we went over to breakout, they did not control cell block whatsoever, did not control graveyard. You're going to need to see them take that barn hill if they're going to win. And there is the bass guitars for Anthrax getting fired up. E United ready to go. E United needs this to force a search and destroy. Optic Gaming is on tournament point. You see Skump starting things out with the ERAD in his hands. I think the ERAD definitely can come into play on this map. Gunless using it for E United. You know, since some of the gun adjustments in Infinite Warfare, the ERAD is a gun at close to medium range. It just absolutely melts. And I think on a map like this, you can definitely put it to great use. 
Silly looking for Scump in the window. Not going to happen. Arsenis, though, able to pick up two, make it three. He's looking for the last man standing, but Krim is too strong. Krim6 answering back with some multi kills of his own. And now Optic Gaming is starting to score. Yeah, 20 seconds left on this hill, though. And E United has those spawns for Barn. They need to hold on to this through this hard point. Make sure they get control when it pops up, because that's where they can start earning streaks. They can make the game easier on themselves. Matt, back at Atlanta, we had such a tough time determining who should be the MVP for E United. Arsides had a fantastic tournament there. You mentioned he seemed a little bit off on Friday, a little bit off on Saturday. We saw his struggles in game one. He's already five and three, though, to open things up for E United. Look for him and Pristini to be super key here on Throwback. Yeah, when Arsides is winning those long-range engagements against Formal, it's going to spawn E United close to the hard point. And they're going to be racking up score just like they are now. Silly up close and personal is getting the job done. It's time to crank up our headphones. Let's go in to another listen in. Hey, 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 one shot, hey, one shot. Oh He's high warning, high warning. Over, just get to the back. Good job, let's go. Good job, let's go. Did you spawn out? Did you spawn out? Yeah, I spawn way out. I spawn way out. Good job, let's go. I don't know where they're spawning. Let's go, baby. Oh, you have streaks? You have streaks? Another one, another one. No. Oh, fuck. Get time, get back time, get back time. Good job, let's go. Let's go, keep it up, keep it up. Got one? I've got hill, I've got hill, I've got hill. I'm helping in the back. Cause spawn oh. limit. Cause spawn limit. Underpass. I'm here. Uh, uh, bowling, bowling, front bowling, front bowling, front bowling, front bowling, front bowling. Underpass, underpass. Scum, scum, scum. Stay alive, stay alive. You're good. You're good. You're good. I'm trying. I'm trying. One, one He's minute. Right, right, right corner. He's laying between the feet. Don't peek it. He pushed our side. He pushed our. He's pushing. He's pushing you. One shot. Pushing you. Touch it. One shot. Pushing you. I got me. Got me. I was going to get him. He's up. Alex, let's go. Play left. Play left. Play left. I'm coming up middle. I'm gonna come up. I'm coming mid too. I'm going top two right now. One medal, one medal, one medal. Watch out, watch out, watch out. United is cruising early on, 82 to just 25 for Optic Gaming. You can hear the communication is on point. There is no wasted efforts, only call outs being made. Arsenis, he's down low. He continues to score, and it's going to be e United most likely hitting that 100 point mark first. When you listen to e United, you would think they're up 2 1 in this series. But just how calm and collected these guys are. Arsenis picks up one inside of the hard point. It's going to be cleaned out by Skunk. But now that Optic has pushed down to try and take some time on bike path, they've given up baseball. See Gunless rotating all the way back out. Needs to pick up a kill here in bowling, and E United will hold this. Pretty interesting stat there that just popped up under the scoreboard. Formal already has four multi kills. That means he's at least picking up two kills at a time. And he's only at 10 and 13, Matt. So when he is getting his kills, they're coming in pairs. But no one for Optic Gaming outside of Skump is consistently winning their gunfights quite yet. Oh, well, they're starting now. You see in the kill feed, a few kills for Karma, a few for Skump. Krim chipping in as well. E United cannot get close to baseball. And just like how E United had this large lead, we're like, oh, it's looking good for them. 30 seconds left on this hill. Optic Gaming could potentially take the lead. Absolutely. Formal just fell, though. Karma's in the back. Krim 6 still scoring, and Karma and Krim will lock it down. Two on four, no problem, baby. Karma catching fire, looking for his fifth straight kill. Oh, and he's challenging. His shot is on point right now. Takes out three players, almost had the fourth there in bowling. And off the gaming. They'll take the last few seconds here. And for as good as E United was in the first half of this game, Optic Gaming, just like that, storms right back into it. I drew your attention to the stats. Well, look, now they are absolutely different. 19 and 11, four straight kills for Scump. Karma's on a five streak. He stayed alive throughout that entire baseball hard point. The rotation is down, though. It's in the middle of the map. Time is going to keep ticking off of the clock. We've seen Optic Gaming have a game finish before the 250 mark. Will it happen once again? They brought this within just an eight point game. Yeah, this is one of the maps that you always have to keep a, an eye on the overall game clock. So when two teams are in the hard point, the clock will go down in the overall time. A lot of times on this one, it comes down close to that overall time. So keep an eye on that as the game goes on. See the hill can, uncontested right now. Both teams fighting for those spawns for Barn. Formal will fall, United making sure there is no flank behind them. They will be setting up for the barn. Gunless rotating early. Pristini is already there. And Silly was the player that was so key for them on this first rotation. His up close and personal K-Bar melted Optic Gaming's pushes. These next few kills are gonna be huge for E United. As soon as Silly dies, he spawns all the way out at the top side of the map. E United though, they go huge. Arsenis with one, Pristini with two. They should be able to hold on to barn. 
120 to 91. You build up a 30 second advantage again, a four streak for Arsides. He was your hot hand to start the game. Plus five at this point. The rest of his teammates, though, have cooled down. They need to get back into that swing of things where they were hitting their shots at the start of this one. Crim6 and Scump are going to just flood in. Now it's Optic with control of the barn. And you see E United spawning on that top side. Maybe one more push here, Chris, and then you'll see them set up for bike path. But you've got to commend the effort from Pristini and Arsides on that hard point. When Silly dies, that could have got ugly really quick for E United. Both those players pick up two kills apiece and they're able to hold on. Looking at about a 13 point game. How is this one going to play out? It's E United inside the hill first. Crim6 though picks up Silly and Pristini. Half of the team off the map. Formal looking for the second half. Arsides is there to trade out kill. Scump is inside the hill though for Optic scoring. Grenade's gonna be flying in. He knows the challenge will be there, but Pristini wins the gunfight. And e United can just not make the same mistake they made last time. They gave up a ton of time on bike path and they gave up the spawns. Pristini, he'll play for this contest. They're in the lead right now. The overall game clock is still ticking down. Just keep an eye on that as we get closer. You see Optic, they slide in, they take the hill. E United still getting those good spawns though. Christini was trying to contest, but all three of his teammates were dropped immediately. Optic Gaming is just wiping E United off of the map. It's not one kill at a time. They're getting big clear. That's what gave them the lead on baseball. We could see it once again. Optic Gaming now in charge. 149 to 142. The 30 point advantage for E United erased from this game. Yeah, and it's a calculated rotation by E United. They knew they were going to lose the lead there. They go set up for a baseball, and they're able to take it right back. That is one. You're going to give up that time. You're going to set up. You're going to play for, you know, a solid 45, 50 seconds instead of maybe getting the last 10, 15 there. Last time we were on this hard point, it was Optic Gaming Scump. Or excuse me. It was Karma and Crim6 who locked down this hill. Now for E United, it seems that guy is going to be silly working with Pristini. They stop Optic's first push. Now it's going to be Gungless cleaned up. Last man here is Silly. And Silly will fall at the hands of Scump. So Optic Gaming will break in with 20 points still to score here on Baseball. Maybe a lot of time for Optic Gaming to get here. You know, e United, they break in and take the remaining you know, 10 seconds or so. It's going to put them very close to the 200 point mark. Fall about 10 seconds short of that. But look at Arsides already in that position holding down that barn side of the map. He has been tremendous doing that here on Throwback. And Gunless is set up here on the train tracks, ready to score. United building up a bit of a lead once again. We're over that 30 point mark, looking for 40. United starting to pull away here and we are running out of time. If you're an Optic Gaming fan, this one is gonna come down to the wire. 2.30 on our game clock. We're definitely going to see a 2.50 this time around. Formal looking for a pinch. He's got Skump going the opposite direction. Both players collide, but Gungless is there to trade out too. It was huge. Formal just able to stay alive, keep the streak going, currently on five. Earns himself a Scarab. Working towards more. E United going to give up the last 15 seconds or so here, Chris. And watch Crim6, number seven on that minimap, top left. He just got a big flank kill, looking for a second. They're trying to distract United, putting pressure from multiple sides. That's allowing Optic to get inside the objective. Once again, from 30 points back down to four, E United barely holding onto a lead, but they do have Barn control. It's a smart play for E United. They're playing the consistent game. They get inside a Barn, they drop the Centurion. You see Skump able to shoot it at range. But it's these kills pushing in towards Pristini with the reactive armor there. He's going to be able to take out Skump. Picks up another one. Knows there's one player heading through the back. Able to take him out as well. Pristini going big here on the barn hard point. Two hills in a row. He's been able to do a lot of work here on barn. Arsene's already dropping 30 on the other side. Skump is looking for a 40 bomb. Karma's going to be cleaned up by some grenades. Gunless locking it in. And it's going to be Arsene's and Gunless. The two left in the barn. The other two spawning out, trying to pick up kills in transition. They slow down Optic. There's 15 points still here to score. They're going to fight for the last 10 seconds or so here, but e United is going to do what's got them in this position in the game. They'll rotate early to bike path. They'll hold down that baseball side, and they'll play for that hard point. They did it on Barn twice already. They need to do it one more time here on bike path. Last time they were on the bike path, though, it was Optic who came in, wiped all four of them, and were able to milk the final points. 
231. It's 19 points still to go here for E United. Optic Gaming needing 37. Both teams contesting this hill. Crim6 has spotted out Silly. The Scarab unable to finish him due to the Blast Shield. And Silly is going to poke, finish off Crim. E United now 14 points away. Yeah, and it's a smart play from E United. They know the overall game clock is not working in Optic Gaming's favor. Contests work great for them. They sit on side of the hard point, draw the Optic players towards them. They're able to win a few gunfights. Look at Krim, though. Krim and Formal all over your kill feed. Krim contesting. His teammates now back in the action. Player five, that was Karma, able to rotate over. They'll be able to continue to contest, but E United is now six points away. Yeah, and Optic Gaming, they go all the way back by Bike Pass. Now they have to fight all the way for the hard point with only one second left. E United and not going to take it here. We get a contest. We're going over to baseball, and Optic Gaming has control. This would be such a collapse. E United needs a break. Is Optic Gaming going to do it again? It's Krim6 overlooking the field. Karma pre aiming, waiting for a challenger. Optic 16 points away. And E United has no streaks here. They have no abilities. They're going to need to do it gun it's on gun. Pristini wins one gunfight, gets a touch on the hard point. And just like that, how the ties have turned, we are going to a game five. I love that. I was watching Pristini, number one on the mini map. He was so sneaky, slipped by the first defender, went through bowling, was able to pick up the key kill on Karma. No one else from Optic in the hill. And it is E United forcing a game five after getting blown out in our first hard point and choking a game two SD. But how the series has gone. When I saw them, no, not win it on Pike Pass, and it went over to baseball, and they had no streaks, and they had no abilities. I was like, oh, no. Like, my, I just could not. Not I like could this. not watch that. Oh, it would have been brutal. Pristini gets a big kill, though, slides right in, and gets that one second that E United needed. And you talked about the mental strength, Matt, the patience from this team. They didn't run in one at a time. No one challenged before the whole team was ready to hit all at once. E United, they just played this by the book, and they played that one perfectly to the finish. This has been such a tight series. Gunless again going huge in the kill call. Yeah, this is kind of what I expected when we saw this box score come up. E United, they played on train to strictly hold down Barn. Our cities is huge in that 122 seconds. He's able to lock down the spawns early and gave E United that win. Will E United force a second best of five? Or is it going to be Optic Gaming finishing strong? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's the CWL Dallas Open. The Grand Finals continues after E United clutches up in a game four. We're headed to game five for Search and Destroy. They just will not go away. E United, they look no bad map one. They have map two in the bag. Definitely not in the bag. Optic comes all the way back. They win two straight maps to force this game five. Just the amount of composure these guys have is unreal. And now all the pressure's on Optic. If you're United, I mean, there's no pressure on you. You made this a series. All the pressure is on Optic Gaming to close it out. And I'm wondering how tired is Optic Gaming? You come out swing at 250 to 67, you spank your opponent. Then you use so much energy mounting that comeback, being down 5-1, you went five straight. A one-point game basically in the uplink, and then you could have stole that hard point in the end. E United stops you short back-to-back -back games, and now we're starting fresh in SD, which before today I'd say is Optic's best game mode this weekend, but Honestly, it looks like a lot of teams could take SDs from Optic the way they've been playing. Well, look, this is what Optic wanted. You know, after Atlanta, it was like, man, we were just gassed after that long loser bracket run. They take care of business. They get through the winner bracket into the grand finals. And now they get a rematch against E United. They are like, oh, man, we're fully rested. We're ready to go. E United forcing a game five here. I think if you're off the game and you lose this one, you're stunned. You gotta go back, you gotta reset, you gotta refocus going that second best of five. But off the gaming, you know, we know what these guys are made of as well. Not gonna go down easy.
Earbuds are in, soundproof headsets are on. It is game time, baby. Game five, loading up right now. We got Optic Gaming on defense. It's United pushing up the bomb. Gunwits going for a fast plant. They want to protect this from the market. Yeah, you're going to see United pretty much hit this site every single time. Unless you do have RCs with the snipe rifle, then maybe you see a bridge push. But you see United, it's actually a really smart play, Chris. They get bombed down. Instead of just playing passive on this site, they're going to start moving around the map. Scump on your screen for Optic Gaming, looking for these defenders. Where is United set up? Once he sees where that bomb is, he has a pretty good idea. Check scaffolding, look under bike. If they're not there, they're definitely at the top of the stairs. Yeah, and it's planted in a position that that player in that upper market can actually get shots down on the bomb diffuser. Two kills there for Gunless. Formal inside of Hotel gets one, but not a lot of time left. Was not going to be able to make it over towards bomb. One round on the board for United. I feel like I've seen this before. Quick plant, perfect execution, fantastic defense after setting up the bomb. It's going to be United striking first on their attack. Optic Gaming will now be moving the objective next. We'll see what Optic Gaming does when they go on the offensive end. Maybe you try and throw an A push here out at the beginning. You have some rounds to play with, but you know, obviously the teams prefer B so heavily on this map. That's what you're going to see them run off the break. Karma going to be your bomb carrier at Scump on your screen, looking for first blood. There's a challenge at the top of the map as well inside the hotel. Crim6 is going to be tagged up, but survives. He forces Gunless back as well. And Formal now is going to try and get the transition kills. Nice teamwork here. Formal's going to find Gunless, then Arsenis. Pristini's going to fall at the hands of Scump, but Silly still in it. Will he be able to pull off the ace? It's not looking good, and Crim6 will send him home here in round two. Yeah, smart play by Formal. As soon as he sees one player slide past that doorway, is able to take him out. You know there's going to be another player there trying to trade that kill. Kills both of them in the hotel hallway. Crim takes out Silly here towards the end. Off to gaming, ties it up. Bomb has gone down to the bottom half of the map. Both attacks, I expect the same, coming into round three. We take a look at the setups for our two teams. Silly going to be running the FTL payload. Gunless, though, has the most important one. It's going to be camo throughout Search and Destroy. He's already at about 70% of the way there. Which is exactly what we saw in map two. And he was able to get it early. They used it early. He never got it back. And I wonder if that map two will just kind of play into their head if he does get camo here early. Prestini picks up one in the hotel. Going to get some shots from behind. Karma's able to win that. Arcee's right there to trade it out. Doesn't win the fight. It'll be United getting bombed down, but Optic Gaming with the man advantage. Optic Gaming, the pressure is on them, but they have that advantage, as you said. Karma finds his third kill this round, looking for the ace. It's only Gunless left alive. Challenges Skump, picks up one. Two players still to beat, and all he has to do is keep Optic from defusing. Not going to happen. Karma with the ace, the defuse, and now he's working on his payload. Gunless is in a very tough position there, up on that top plat. So hard to get players out of there when the bomb is up down. Karma with some nice shots with the NV4 will put Optic up 2-1. We got some super fans in the crowd here today. Thank you all for being with us all weekend long. Make some noise. We got a heck of a series on our hands, and we are going in to round four. It's e United who struck first twice. They are up 2-1. And they will be back on defense as it is Optic's turn to attack. You do have Karma with that Scarab. Let's see if he can get close towards the bomb here, working towards more streaks. He just needs 125 points, and he's got himself rockets. These could be devastating in the second half of the game. This is risky for me, United. They're going to try and come out from that top bedroom. So dangerous. Nades fly in there. A lot of fire goes down. It's really risky. Arceus is able to pick up one, get out with his life. So he evens it up at three players apiece. Peekaboo. It's Gunless coming out on top. Formal had to go for the rough angle. Three defenders still up. And you're going to see it's Karma. Last man standing as Crim6 falls at the hands of Gunless. Arsenis gets burned. Karma's going to decide to use this camo, and he's going for Gunless, who's on the defuse. No one saw him coming. Karma bought him enough time. It's Optic Gaming's Karma playing insane right now. Best play I have seen this tournament, Matt. The pop of the camo gets Gunless off a of bomb. 
And you're like, oh, he's won the round, doesn't need to fight Silly. As soon as he gets a few shots at him, no, he has him dead. Karma challenges him there. A huge play from Karma. Gets fully streaked out as well. Karma, two rings, baby. Seven and one. Clutching up the massive 1v3. Now all the pressure goes onto the side of E United. Saw so Optic Gaming make that tremendous comeback in game number two. Can E United start to make a comeback of their own? They do have active camo. They get bombed down with man advantage, so you're not going to use it here. You're going to save that camo maybe for a later round. Excuse me, earlier I misspoke. It is Optic with the lead, of course, 3-1, as you saw. And now they are trying to make it 4-1. It comes down to, once again, a 1v1 between the two best s &D players in this game. Statistically, so far, Gunless from E United looking for Karma. We'll see how Karma decides to play this. So he's going to use some Shriek, so he knows exactly where Gunless is right now. Let's see if Gunless just tries to run out. Challenge, maybe? So risky here. Here comes the fight. Gunless wins it this time. It's a big round win for E United. Karma wins that. The fans start to go crazy. 4-1 in Optic's favor. Would have been very difficult for E United to come back. It's a big win there by Gunless. Karma's had some great plays. He earned himself full streaks. Unfortunately, the streaks not coming out well in that previous round. We'll keep our eyes on the payloads as well. It's the camo battle between Karma and Gunless to look out for. You do look. I mean, Karma does waste a streak during that round, so pretty big for United. Krim's going to get pushed here in Hotel Hallway. A really aggressive defensive call from United, and it pays off. Formal tagged up, survives it, health is back, ready to fight, finds the kill, but Gunless is there to trade out. These hits from e United, they just swarm as a squad, and once again, it's only Karma left alive. He is going to fall. We are all tied up here in Game 5. And you think, with the momentum that Optic had, with that big play from Karma, you know, the room's so electric. That's when you really need to kind of you know, put your foot on the gas and put e United away. They let them get back into it. Tie it up at three rounds apiece. This is getting dangerous, Matt. Yeah. Karma United still streaks, could, though. United could force a second best of five here. Remember, this is Matt's point, tournament point for Optic Gaming. United coming through the loser's bracket will have to beat them in this first best of five if they want to take home the trophy. Gunless is going to be rotating over to this bomb, immediately gets the plant down once again. Arsides is going to be on top deck, doesn't see anything. Optic Gaming not going to show their faces until after they know where everyone's at. Yeah, the difference between now and round number one, though, is Formal is set in that top market area. You're not going to be able to just push through and take that position on the map. They'll be gunless, though. Able to stay alive here. Do you use the Scarab and try and get a rocket here? Or do you just get the gun kills? He's Whoa. got one, not going to get the second. Optic reclaiming the lead here, 4-3. And he stays alive for a pretty decent amount of time in that second player challenges. Maybe if he goes a little bit vertical, he's able to win that second fight. But Optic Gaming takes the round 4-3. Gunless does earn streaks, though. We saw them use streaks in map number two. Wasn't too good. They need to use this utility much better if they're going to take game five. Let's go, Optic. The chant has started once again here in the venue. We're going into round eight. Optic Gaming up by one. They are two rounds away from becoming your Dallas champions. It looks like no bomb, obviously, going towards that same preferred site as usual. Bomb plant has been spotted. Karma's been eliminated. No bomb plant. And you're going to see streaks actually come out from the side of E United as well. So you did get that first kill. Now you know exactly where these players are in Optic are. But it's almost a little bit of a waste, Chris. I mean, you had bombed down. You get that first blood. Don't need to waste streaks there. Christini's going to find one. Skump is right there to answer back for Optic. Still a man advantage for E United. And Skump is going to outshoot Silly there. So that makes this a two on two. 46 seconds still to go. Bomb Optic knows exactly where it's at. E United will not be able to plant. They have to win their fights. And Gungless will not stop out shooting Optic Gaming members. That is his 13th kill. Krim in a rough spot gets tagged up. Another kill on the board for Gunless. He has been an absolute monster all tournament long, wreaking havoc on Optic Gaming here in Search and Destroy. I'm trying to think of players in this tournament or even 
on this planet, Matt, who match up better against Optic Gaming? Gunless seems to give them so much trouble, not just in the S&Ds and the respawns as well, but really it's his search and destroy play that makes him a standout all-star. He has the active camo, he has the bombardment, he has the scarab. All they need is two rounds. You put the bomb in his hand. I would like to see you put it in somebody else's hand. You hover these streaks over. You're able to take some players out. It's an easy round win for United, and you can serve the camo. You see a Scarab coming in. It's going to get Gunless weak. We'll see if they're able to hold on, win this round. They do have bomb down. And now comes camo. the camo. He's going to find one. Finds the second sleeping. Karma was checking the flank, and he is punished. Krim, last man up, is able to pick up kill Silly, but he needs all four kills. There's the second on Pristini. He gets tagged up from the side. That's exactly where RC is. Runs out of bullets. Only 15 seconds left here, Chris. It would be almost impossible. Would need to get back towards the bomb. And E United, one round away from forcing a second best of five. I love this matchup, Matt. And this is definitely not the last time we will see it throughout Infinite Warfare. These two squads will be battling for multiple trophies this year. $200,000 on the line, though, this weekend. And we are going into game point, match point for E United. They could force a second best of five here. And regardless of the outcome of this game five, this is maybe the best game five S&D performance I've ever seen out of Gunless. 16 and four. Just doing a tremendous job. It's Krim getting first blood for OG, taking out Pristini. It's going to be RC's falling as well. Krim with three huge kills. Said, do you forget my 20 bomb back in Ghost, Matt? I can play SND too. A huge start to that round for Krim. The second round 11 in this series. And we'll see what both teams have in terms of payloads, in terms of strikes here at the beginning of this round. Obviously, who has offense or defense, a huge decider and how you're going to use some of these streaks and abilities. You do have e United starting out on offense. We go over to Gunless. He does have the bombardment. And the bomb as well, though. So as you touched on, you can't get the bomb down safely and use your streaks at the same time. He's going to use the bombardment first. They're going to try and force Optic back. Then they will inch up on the bridge. This is really the only time we've seen them gone A all game long. Yeah, I was going to say the one player out of position for Optic was Krim. He's all the way in that back cathedral. Everybody else had a way to get inside to cover. He's not able to do so all the way in the back there. That's an easy first blood for E United. And look how scared Optic is. They get fooled. They all go to A, but the bomb is over at B. Man advantage for E United here. 45 seconds to go. This bomb should go down any moment. Be a monster retake for Optic Gaming if they're able to come back in this one. Formal putting shots in silly. It's going to be Karma and Scum heading down the stairs. It's going to be Gunless picking up one more. Scump is out, so no reactive armor. It's only formal, and we are going to a second best of five. E United clutching up. After being down two games, they come storming back. It's the team that will never die. Holy hell, man. Did not see that one coming. When Optic Gaming goes up 2-0 in the series in the fashion they did, I think everybody in the room was just waiting for that to happen. Look at RCs, he's like not even happy they won. I can see the amount of emotion and just energy you have to put in to make that comeback. It is so difficult. Winning that game five, forcing a second best of five series here in the grand finals. Big props to E United. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who your favorite team is, who is the squad you like to cheer for, you have to absolutely respect the skill that all eight of these players have showcased throughout this grand finals. You can't ask for a better best of five. Two game, but basically two game fives we've seen between these two squads. Will we see a third now here in Dallas? Two round 11s in the search and destroys in this one. Gunless goes 18 and six. That is search and destroy. Gunless goes 18 and six. That's all you got to know about this game. He absolutely dominated in the biggest moment against Optic Gaming. He's going for his second MVP title. Oh. Raising the trophy will help him get there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a clean slate. It is all even. It's all tied up. A fresh series is coming up when we return.
don't go anywhere. It is match two of the grand finals of CWL Dallas. CWL Dallas, are you ready? It's prime time. $200,000 on the line. It's Championship Sunday here at the Call of Duty World League. This is going to be amazing. We are pumped to get it started. Behind camo, you, there's the camo, and there's the game. E United, knock out Envious. There's three. He just needs Jordan now for the ace. He's wrapping the back. Give me all the kills. And we'll get the play from Clay. There goes the jump, though. The MDL jump, too strong. One versus one, 19 seconds He's left. Silly gets the kill. Let's go. With the smile, the three-piece T keeps on gunning. Oh, my God! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Championship Sunday here at the CWL Dallas Open. Of course, our grand final fully underway. E United versus Optic Gaming, and E United have reset the bracket. They have done 50% of the hard part. They have managed to win that first best of the uh, best of five. Now, of course, heading to a second best of five versus Optic Gaming. I mean, let's talk about that first best of five quickly, though. I mean, Merc, it, it, it started off and it did not look good for E United at all. Yeah, I mean, game one, it was like 250 to 67, all of off the double positive, just, just turned out so well. And then game two, you think E United is just going to shut them out really fast? You know, 6 1, 6 2, and search and destroy. But Optic, they come back, and I know everybody, well, 99% of people, maybe except for, you know, Potoff and those guys, but <laughs> everybody thought this was done. Right, absolutely. I mean, 5 1 lead. TP, you know, I have to bring this to you, of course. You're part of that full sail moment. You know what it's like to make those comebacks. I mean, how do you make a comeback like that? Uh, one round at a time. You just need any sort of momentum, and Optic was able to get that one round they needed and just ride the wave. It's mostly just poor uh, utility usage in both of these search and destroys that we've seen time and time again. And, uh, man, I have to give credit to United, though. That is the worst start you could possibly have in a series, and they reverse sweep still. That's a lot of composure, more composure I've seen in years, probably. Unbelievable. Fantastic performance thus far. Of course, grand final not over yet. Momo, that, of course, leads to the next question. How much further can E United go? Will they run out of gas? Are they going to run out of energy? E United have shown what they're made of right now, and they can do anything. They, they can do anything. They can beat Optic. They've done it before. They've now reverse swept them. When was the last time Optic Gaming got reverse swept? There's a question for someone out there, because I don't know. I do not know the answer to that. And now, E United, they not only reverse sweep them, they have a chance to come from loser bracket. When was the last time a team came from loser bracket and won the tournament? There's so many unanswered questions for me right now. I, I'm I'm shaking up here. I'm think I'm getting I'm getting nervous for these guys. The adrenaline is definitely getting to us all. I think it's better to say we're all watching that just mind blown, mind blown by that comeback. But as I said, e United have done 50% of the hard work. They still need to beat Optic Gaming in another best of five. Can it be done? The second set about to get underway. Over to Mr. X and Pucket. Thank you so much. We just listened to Momo ask the question, when was the last it time you happened. saw Optic Gaming get reverse sweeped? That's like Advanced Warfare stage? Yeah, I think it was It was one of our season finals. Of, I believe it was Advanced Warfare. It was to phase. I think it was a best of seven. Well, that was several years ago, yeah. but still a ridiculous feat. E United is here to stay. Everyone thought maybe after Atlanta, is this a fluke? As the new patches come out, will this team disappear? Absolutely not. I think this is a squad we are going to see on the main stage multiple times as we close out. There are a lot of questions with the United. I mean, they went to ESWC after a big win in Atlanta, did not place well there. They come back here, you know, they lose early. I know they lose a TK, they lose the face, and they find themselves, you know, battling through the loser bracket all the way back. These will be your final maps here at CWL Dallas. You'll have Squarch Hardpoint to kick things off. This is one, you can see some more ERAD use. We saw Optic Gaming win it earlier in the day. But all the momentum with E United right now. Absolutely. Here's a look at Arsides. He has been an X Factor for this team. When he turns up, they are able to take the response. When it comes to search, though, for me, Matt, it's all this, man. Gunless is gunning 
for his second MVP title. And, you know, Maven actually comes up to me. He's like, who would you pick as the MVP if E United were to pull this off? And I was like, I do not want to be involved in that process whatsoever. Silly has been tremendous all tournament long. Gunless in that first best of five gets him to the second one. I, I would not want to pick that. That's what we have to go with. And I want to give a big shout out to everyone in the competitive gaming community. We got FPS fans, pro players. Everyone is on Twitter right now. And you should be as well. Use the hashtag CWL Dallas. Let us know. How do you see this one playing out? It's a fresh best of five, even slate. We are starting at the very beginning of this one, Matt. Yeah, and I think everybody know whether you're an Optic fan, a United fan, FaZe fan, you just want to see close games with the best players in the world. And these two teams have delivered that in our first best of five. So we get things underway in our second one. I think this is a huge map for Optic. A lot like I said, the first map in the first series was huge for E United. If E United comes out and thrashes Optic in this hard point, they're going to start to get in their own head a little bit. These players have to be mentally exhausted after that first series, but we have potentially five more games before we are done here in Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, out in the crowd, do it for me one more time. Show some love for all eight of these players. It is time for game number one, the second series. We're headed to Scorch for Hardpoint. The game will get underway in about 15 seconds now. But I think, you know, Gunless, after that great performance in game five, he starts to heat up. You get the great play from Silly. We saw Arsenis, and it wasn't lighting up the kill feed on throwback hardpoint, but the way he rotated early and was able to get those spots, you know, to lock down Barn, gave them 100 plus seconds. Look to see him impact the game in that fashion as we jump right into it on board with Gunless first. Absolutely love watching this man. Gunless was an absolute rock star. And he is once again picks up Scump. Three kills to start the hard point. Make it four. Who can outshoot this man? And yet this is not a good sign for Optic Gaming at the beginning to see him rolling. 4 0 here at the start. Cillian Co. locking down the center. Hard point. Optic Gaming picks up two kills. Gunless working his way back towards the center. Smart play here. Playing for the streaks, playing for the long game, waiting for his teammates to get into position before going out and challenging Blinder. Player number six, that's Arsenis on the mini-map, is going to be backing up Gunless. Here comes Pristini, the two twins, trying to get in. But it's Formal on the flank with the K-Bar, picking up three. It's Optic able to pick up some scrap time. Instead, the rotation fight is going down. Player three, Crim6, has to be their key. And the members of Optic Gaming, they go back towards the center of the map and they take that time. And just by pushing a little bit further out, spawns Formal all the way up at that top side. So this is a great opportunity for E United to take Turbine. Two players challenged from the top. Both were shut down. Arsenis picks up another two. Silly is getting chased and Formal will be cut away. Optic Gaming trying to flood in. They're staggering their way through, but finally it's Karma and Crim6 up for now. Yeah, but this is where you start to get in trouble in hardpoint, Chris, when you start flooding from one side. The other team is still controlling the spawns. They're spawning closer, so they're going to win this trade battle eventually. And you see E United come out on top. They're going to take the last 20 or so seconds. Scarab available for Gunless after that first opening of four straight kills. Arsity, seven and three. Also a player to look out for throughout this one. We talked about him being an X Factor. When Arsity turns up, respawns become possible. It's e United doubling up Optic score after our first two hills, 55 to 25. But here in the hangar, this is where we see Optic Gaming bring games back. Yeah, and RC slides in as no teammate support there. He drops. So let's see how e United decides to break this. They're spawning very far away. You do have Pristini, though, trying to work all the way down towards that bottom side of your minimap. Be huge if he could pick up a kill. That would break the spawn in the back cave, allow e United to get in. Over to Karma now. Working towards his streaks. He's one kill away from the Scarab. Challenger in the back. Gonna push out. Melee is gonna land on Gunless. Did not get that Scarab. It wasn't inside the hard point when he picked up the kill. Silly is gonna find two, though, as it's E United battling for control. Back to back doubles means 20 seconds of time. Optic Gaming, are they gonna challenge one more time? It looks like it. Here comes the push from the top of the bridge. Pristini's waiting for him. Yeah, but now they're gonna give up Drill at the beginning. Two players for E United Road hit over to Drill early. It's actually a big kill there by Formal, another one by Skump. So it looks like Optic Gaming should be able to get Drill control here at the beginning of the hard point. 
Matt, a lot of the maps here in Infinite Warfare play differently in Hardpoint. We see how punishing Breakout can be when Optic was able to hold E United to just 67 points. Talk to me about the rotations. How key are they, though, here on Scorch, a much smaller map? Yeah, so the two hills you can get a ton of time on on Scorch is, you know, the Turbine and that hangar we were just in. And it's very difficult to get both of them because they're one right after another. So if you're going to invest a lot of players to hold down Turbine, you're most likely not going to be able to get all the way across the map to get towards Cave to lock that down. Optic Gaming takes the lead. 80 and counting. Despite not rotating to the drill, they still get the key gunfights. They have three up, make it just two now. Pristini and Gullis come surging through once again. Double double, no Optic Gaming. Final 15 points going to E United. Just really solid hard point play from E United. You know, when I was talking about Optic before, flooding through one side, the opposing team holding down those spawns, not able to win those trades. E United does the exact opposite, Chris. They go through bridge middle map. They come from observation deck. They come from the opposite side as well. Pinch inside the hard point and get control. I'm on my sixth bottle of water up here in the casting booth. I can't imagine hydration how it is to be one of these players constantly communicating throughout this one. E United up by 20. Optic though trying to storm back on the bridge. Four down. It's Optic inside. Arcides is going to be challenging from the top. They're going to send Pristini down low to the bottom half of your map. But Optic, they are not going to get flanked. Crim falls, but they keep scoring. They could retake the lead once again. So you can think of this hill a lot like how we saw at the beginning of Throwback, where it was really United setting up for that second hard point on Farn. This time it's going to be Turbine. Formal picks up two, but he's going to actually spawn the members of United on the opposite side of the map, right there where they want to be. So no two kills in succession, but puts the United in a pretty good position to try and win these gun engagements at the beginning of Turbine. Big rotation going down. Formal's looking for the kills. He's going to find Gunless Pristini staying alive for E United, but he's all alone. One on one versus Crim Six here. Crim trying to locate Pristini inside of the hard point. Members from E United fly in as well. It's going to be Persini getting one, Karma with one as well. Formal trying to stay alive, but it's Arcides and Silly coming in on a pinch. Going to take the hill for United. Arcides is so slippery right now. He is sliding in, getting the picks, getting out. Flying high while Persini will pick up Crim 6. It's gone back and forth in terms of who's out slaying the other squad. Currently, Silly, the best score in the game at 17 and 11. So if you're wondering what the hell happened to Formal there, he actually has the Scarab out. As soon as Arceus comes in, he blows it up, gets himself weak. Arceus turns and kills him. It just looked really funny from Arceus POV. 15 seconds left on Turbine. This is what's so difficult. You have to go all the way across the map to get control of Hangar. Optic Gaming fully set up. They need a good hold here. It's going to be a 25-point advantage for E United, but that lead could disappear if Optic holds the hangar as well as they did on the first rotation. First pick goes down. It's formal cleaning up gunless. Crim6 finds Pristini in the back. Look how far those spawns are out for your red arrows. E United has to go across this very narrow sky bridge. There's plenty of head cover. Formal able to just sit back and pick them off from afar. They got to go for a wall run, and that is going to be three crosshairs looking for you. In that yeah, way. a lot of the time in hard point, the fastest route is not always the best route to get towards the hill. A lot easier to come down this sky bridge, of course, but you're not going to be able to get in. Good use of FTL jump trying to get in there, bait one player out. Second player just comes in a little bit too slow. Optic Gaming now taking the lead, Chris. 20 seconds left in this hard point. Looks like E United's going to give up here. They're going to set up for this drill. Karma with his active camo available. The payload is there. He's positive five, leading all players once again now at 18 and 13. Silly on the other side, trying to answer back for E United, has reached 20 now. Christini set up, but the challenge is here at the drill. Two players from Optic in front of him. And Persini will break through. Here's the flank. It's our city's coming in, and that is a big one on Karma. E United is able to flood through. They pick up one. Optic, though, constantly respawning close. They should be able to reinforce. Yeah, but just look at Persini just doing a great job, just bobbing in and out of the hard point there. No, getting behind cover. Has teammates looking over him. But Optic Gaming gun skill too strong. They flood through. They're going to try and get into observation here, which they do as Karma pushes out Silly. Going to force E United far from this hard point. Now, Karma was able to pick up Arcides, 
and it looked like just a normal kill. He was the last one up, but it's actually a massive one. He stopped Arsides, who is just 100 points away from securing some streaks. So streaks still not going to be available here for this United squad. We'll look to see how payloads and streaks could come into play at the end of this game. Skump tagged up, has to retreat. Formal is inside the drill, though, picking up every last second. And it's going to be Optic Gaming flooding into the bridge first. They have the lead. They are now 40 points away from taking game one. Yeah, and e United can not just rotate over towards the turbine side, let Optic collect a lot of time because they can obviously win it on this hard point. So e United, they're going to have to play more towards this bridge and fight for that turbine rotation. You see three kills in e United's favor. They're going to get control of the hill and try and push through. Grenade goes down. Pristini tagging up one. It's going to be Formal trying to challenge. Pristini's waiting for him, wins the first fight, challenging a second. Karma trades out. Gungless will fall. Karma causing problems. Cillian Arsides trying to hold strong, and it will be Arsides winning the last fight. This will keep E United scoring. And Optic Gaming looks like they're going to fall back here, Chris. They're going to give up the last 10 seconds or so, and they're going to play to win this game on Turbine. They have two Scarabs on the bottom side of the map, just using those to scout. Get players weak as they come in. Here comes a Scarab from Arsides. Can he land it before dying, Matt? That would have picked him up the Trinity Rocket instead. Arsides has to do it with the K-Bar. He's going to be cut down once again. It's Karma stopping the streaks and keeping Optic scoring 230 to 198. Optic Gaming, 17 points away. E United with one last push. Yeah, realistically, this is E United's last chance to get inside of the hard point. They're going to take their time here. Eight seconds left for Optic to close this out. Gunless wins one fight. He has one teammate there in support. It's going to be silly. They need to get in and contest. 250, 198. Optic Gaming strikes first. Both these teams just going back and forth in the respawn game modes. The last hard point in the first series we saw went to E United to kick things off. A lot like the first series, Optic Gaming takes map number one. I'm loving what we've seen from these two teams. I thought this was E United's game. Optic Gaming, though, storming back in the second half. How many times have we said that this week? Here's a look at some of the best plays. It was all gunless. Opens up 4-0. E United first on the scoreboard. Optic Gaming, though, answering back in the hangar, taking the lead at about 110. United, they were able to cruise back into the game. They were up by 30, but Optic never let them run away with, with this one. They kept it close, and they finished strong. And Karma with a really good game number one. He finishes, I believe, at the top of the leaderboards in terms of kills for Optic, and has a ton of hard point time. So you saw Karma doing a very nice job there. Actually, you see uh, it's going to be Formal. Actually, finishes at the top of the hill time, not in terms of kills, but Formal puts together a pretty good day in game number one. You see where the damage was done. It was in that hangar. And we talked about how difficult that rotation is from turbine to hangar. You're not usually able to get two in succession. Optic Gaming, they take hangar. E United, they took turbine. The real difference there towards the end was the amount of time Optic got on drill. This battle, it's so tight. E United and Optic Gaming, one of the best new rivalries. We have an Infinite Warfare last American tournament in Atlanta. It was two best of fives. Here in Texas, we're going to our second best of five, the second search and destroy, or third search and destroy in this series. And you have to look at Gunless coming into this one, Matt. He has been lights out in this game mode. Yeah, he was great in game two in the first series, tremendous in game five. I will say, though, E United, you know, they gave away that game, too. Not great score streak use, not great payload use. They got to be better here in the second best of five if they acquire all that utility. Small mistakes. E United should have won both of the search and destroys. They were up 5-1 going up against Optic Gaming in the first series. They let Optic Gaming come back five straight rounds. But United did not fall short there. They battled back, forced the second series. You have to think they have the momentum. They have the confidence after a big win on retaliation. Will they tie up our series once again? Or is Optic Gaming going to jump out once again to another 2-0 lead? Keep your eyes on Krim6 coming into the day. He had the best S&D stats. Yeah, this series is so hard to predict from the standpoint that obviously, you know, United... No, they make it all the way here through losers. They win that first series. You go to this next one, and really, you know, we see Krim. He's the only one here in the top 10 in terms of, you know, KD. 
in S and D. But I feel like, Chris, you know, when we get to this point, there's so much on the line and all the pressure. You know, everything that happened up until this point kind of goes out the window. You just have to focus on these two series and how each individual player is performing in them. Krim 6, a 1.28 is good enough for number 8 after 11 maps. Only Enable has played as many SNDs. He finishes just above at 5th with a 1.3. And we talked about how good Enable was. Krimbot, he wasn't a massive factor in the previous series of Search's games. It was more karma for me. But I'm going to be watching the Krimbot once again. Excited to see what he can do, especially knowing this is going to be Crusher Search. How does Krim fare in the short-range battles over at B? Well, it's going to be interesting how United plays. I think that's kind of going to dictate how Krim plays, because Pristini is very difficult to locate in the s and A lot of areas he can go with a flank on. I mean, over towards A, you can hit inside with an E-Rad. You can go over towards B on that you know, far wall on challenge players on the back rock. There's a lot of different routes you can take. And this is one map where, you know, you see a lot of action towards both sides of the map now. It seems to be always over towards B. Now you see a little bit more action over towards A. It's time to wake up once again. I know it's getting late in the evening, but you do not want to miss the action that is coming up right now. We're going to be headed to Crusher for Search and Destroy. Matt, as the time is ticking off our countdown, give me the prediction. Is it E United tying this one up? Or is Optic Game and building the lead? It's very difficult to say. I mean, coming into this one, you know, with the great SND performance from Gunless, you know, in game five, you don't know if he can replicate that, but he was good in game two. So you would say E United is definitely going to be you know, the favorite in SND. We're kicking this one off with Silly for E United. The rock star in respawns. He had a great day one and two. Haven't been talking about him as much in the search, but he's definitely a key factor. He's the one who keeps this team level-headed. And he's going to open up with the first blood. Pristini also with the kill. This is going to be just Scump alive in a 1v1 versus Gunless. And both players have the E-Rad at the beginning of this one, so they charge in A. Now pick up some kills. Silly challenges Scump there towards the end. I believe he does not know that Scump has the E-Rad, so very difficult challenge. Obviously, if you had K-Bar versus E-Rad, Silly does not know that. Scump wins the fight, forces this 1v1. Keep in mind, Gunless has to plant the bomb or pick up the kill on Scumpy. Once he plants the bomb, it'll be easier for him to set up on defense. Scumpy and Gunless, though, right now, currently just roaming the map, looking for the kill instead. Yeah, I mean, Gunless has a ton of time to work with. I mean, 45 seconds is an eternity in Search and Destroy. Really does not have to make any type of decision until we get to, you know, about 20 seconds left, maybe like, you know, 18, 15 seconds left. Then you have to decide which site you want to go towards. Watch the action on the mini-map. It's in the top left. Slowly, these arrows are getting closer. Scump, he's just been swimming in a circle, back and forth, back and forth, but Gungless is somehow going to slip in. Yeah, so we don't actually catch it because we're on Scump's POV, but you can see as soon as Gunless goes on that high wall run, he actually sees Scump around that rock because you can see him make a direct beeline, not towards the bomb, goes to pick up the kill. Patience paying off. Gunless, incredible through search and destroys against Optic Gaming. Optic, though, they're never done in search until the final round. Formal on your screen to open things up. It's Optic on the attack. A strong A defense is going to be employed by E United, but Optic is going the opposite direction. You see those red arrows now starting to rotate. Yeah, we see this from teams instead of just trying to play standard over at B, they you know stack A, see if anyone pushes inside, and then rotates all the way back. Pretty long trek over towards the B bombs for the offense. You can get there and nade the players off. You see some hit markers come with the nades. Karma takes out Pristini first here. It's now Scum with bomb in hand. Gonna decide how to play this. It looks like they're gonna go challenge these fights in the back rock. And they win a lot of them. This is a quick round for Optic Game. The ERAD melts at short range, especially when you get a call out of exactly where they're positioned. Karma setting the tone with first blood. And here he is working with Scump on the final kill. Crim6 also able to hit a bullet there. Everyone flooding in at once as Optic Gaming will tie this one up at one apiece. We're going into round three. E United back on the attack. Gunless has been their bomb carrier almost every s &D. And by now, you have to know it if you're Optic Gaming. Yeah, and I mean, you're going to know he's just going to try and play up towards the bomb. Obviously, you know, get that down, use it as cover. You do see they're going to favor more over towards the B bomb site this round. As Optic, they try and stack, but... Look at this, Ooh. they exit a little bit late. And this is what I was talking about pregame. Christini, so sneaky with these flank rounds. 
Talking to E United, the one thing they do change up about their search and destroy is who they send on the flank. So you can never know who is missing. Pristini thought he had the first kill, didn't finish it, was able to hurt two other players, picked up one kill, but now it's just Silly left alive in a 1v2. That first kill, or rather, no kill in the first fight was definitely costly. Yeah, Pristini sees two players body stack. He tries to just shoot through both of them after getting one weak. He's only able to pick up one kill. And the man count stays in Optic's favor. They're able to trade it out towards the end. Karma will get the defuse. They'll put Optic up. This is a round that definitely should have gone in favor of E United. Instead, Optic Gaming takes the lead 2 1. We're going into a round four. It'll be Optic back on the attack. E United, how will they set up on defense? Remember last time they four stacked A, then rotated over for the fight at B. Looks like we're going to see the same thing here on defense. I do expect, though, if United doesn't see someone right away, they're going to get a little bit more aggressive, and you see that right now. They're going to push straight through. I've, I mean, you look at this map, and everyone going left except for our cities this time. So your flanker is going to be the other twin. Gunless checking every single corner in the Optic spawn. Now they, they know Optic is definitely here at B. Bomb should be going down any moment, but e United has been spotted. Karma waiting for the push. So our city's job as that number two arrow all the way in the back is to make sure he calls out if Optic Gaming pushes all the way through to the e United side of the map, because that's going to tell the three players on the flank that they're good to try and push through and pinch them in that back area. E United gets the call from our cities. It's clear. Let's all flood from the same side. Gunless. Switching up the role that Arsenis was playing earlier is going to be watching the back lane, and you're going to see the first blood go in favor of Pristini. Scump here, though, with the e red 5-2. Make it three. The headshot sits silly down. It's all up to Gunless. Can he clutch a 1v2? He's tagged up. He's eliminated. It's 3-1 Optic. Yeah, Scump takes out one player, gets weak, pops reactive armor, and he's able to take out the next two. Smart heads-up play there from Scump. In that close alleyway with the reactive armor and the ERAD in hand. He was going to melt through both those players. Three kills for Skump in a big round as they put up Optic up three to one. The King is back on an SMG, and boy, does it look good in round number four. Round five coming up, though. We'll switch sides. United on the attack once again. Gunless, your bomb carrier, as always. Looking at the payloads, Gunless is still quite a bit away from getting that camo. Karma, same situation for Optic Gaming. Now Optic with the man count. We'll see how E United decides to play this. And I do like this call. You need to at least get one pick here early. Silly puts a lot of shots in one. And now that gunless falls, puts Silly and RC's in a very tough position. Oh no, Silly wasn't spotted, but when he fires, they know exactly where he's at. Arsenis able to pick up one. Three still up for Optic. They come flooding out together. Is this going to be the reverse of what we saw in our previous series? Can E United now claw back after a three round lead here for Optic Gaming? Optic Gaming just looks really locked in here. You know, after that first series, you know, the guys take a little bit of a break. They go in the back, you know, we can see them walk by their faces. They were not happy. And they are taking it out at EU United in our second series. Round six coming your way right now on board with Scumpy. Erad in hand, as always. Crim six looking for action in A, even throwing grenades, trying to bait out EU United defenders. And look at this. This is the first time we've seen EU United just run all at them at B. And Silly is going to fall off the map. That's man advantage now for Optic Gaming. A huge mistake once again. Yeah, he picks up one, he gets shot, he falls off the map. Now you see RC's now wrapping back. RC's the last one alive yet again for E United. It's a lot of time here for Optic Gaming to figure out how they want to play this. A lot of time for Arsides to pick up a 1v2 clutch. I'm feeling good about this, Matt. He only has two kills, about to double his score here. I know with the way Optic Gaming is going right now, they're heading in towards this A bomb site. Gonna make it very difficult for RC's to pick up two. Is it? Yeah, formal's pretty good. Yeah, you know, though, if you play those corners, you get bombed down. It's a really high percentage chance you're going to win the round. Nice try by Arsides. Formal gives him the wiggle midair, doesn't miss a shot. And now it's Optic Gaming on game point. Let's go. They took our first hard point. 
trying to build a 2-0 lead in the best of five. Yeah, when your RC is coming around the corner, you take out that bomb planter. It just gives formal, you no know, two, three seconds to figure out where you are, put a few bullets in you before you can even snap onto them. Just thinking about the situation we're in right now, it's ridiculous. Two grand finals, four best of fives between these two squads. Two on two situation. Gunless and Pristini for EU United going up against Formal and Krim. And Gunless is looking for Formal. He spotted him once. Can he get there in time? Krim is coming, and this one is over. Formal wins the last fight. 6 1. Optic Gaming showing their strength now in Search and Destroy. They just look like a completely different animal in the second series. They win game number two, 6 1. Now, just like the first series, though, E United with their backs against the wall going into uplink. You saw the stance from Scump there. The leaderboard will show his progress in this game. Here's a look back at some of the best moments. Scump's Erad doing work early. Round number two. Pristini with a chance. Did not finish the first player to his left, and that one cost him big in round three. Optic Gaming with the momentum here. You see Scum popping the reactive. He picks up the triple with the ERAD, and from here on out, it looked like it was Optic Gaming on cruise control. Yeah, when you take a look at the scoreboard, the first round E United wins is a 1v1 between Gunless and Scump that Gunless ends up taking. After that, it is all Optic Gaming. Scump goes 12 and 5 in that SND. Tremendous performance. E United finds themselves with their backs against the wall. I can't wait to see how the rest of this one plays out. If you're just joining us, this is the second best of five. E United came from the loser's bracket. They were able to defeat Optic Gaming after being down two games. They won three straight, clutching up in a round 11 to get to this point. But Optic in the second series, they take the hard point. They crush the search and destroy 6-1. They're on match point once again. Yeah, and you gotta wonder, you know, if Optic Gaming wins this, who is your control freak MVP for this team? Formal has been lights out. Scump, though, has been impressive all tournament long. You know, everyone's talking about Formal. We're talking about, you know, the great things that Karma does. I feel like Scump got a little bit lost with this team, and his slaying power has definitely showed up this weekend. Scump's highlights throughout the weekend. He's put them on basically every single series. This matchup earlier is where Scump was able to drop big bombs. He had 51 kills, I believe, against Luminosity earlier today. Or is it Splice? Uh, it was against Splice. Throwback hard point. He's been a rock star, man. Erad in his hand looks pretty darn good as well. Will he be our MVP? Still some games to go. We're about a minute away from game number three. Uplink will be coming up next. Yeah, it's all how you determine who your control freak MVP is, right? Some people look at just stats. You know, you look at the KDs and whatnot and what they do in certain big game scenarios. I mean, you look at some of the micro stuff in game, you know, some of the stuff that Karma does that gives them, you know, a lot of this hill time, being able to pick up these kills on rotation, always in the right spot, setting up teammates. I think, uh, you know, the Control Freak MVP has a lot of meaning to a lot of different people. So, it's, uh, you know, I, th I think it's all up to opinion. Matt, how would you decide the MVP? Would you leave it up to the team, make it real awkward? Uh, no, no, you can never put a team in that type of situation. I mean, you know, I've worked with teams where, you know, some people get kind of salty if they're not the MVP of an event when they kind of feel like it. I think you got to kind of take all things into consideration. Obviously, you look at the stats, you see their stats in the biggest moments. I think those you obviously weigh higher than others. And then just what they bring to a team in terms of leadership, you know, making the game easier for the rest of their teammates. I think there's a lot that goes into picking an MVP. If United is somehow able to claw back in this one, I have a feeling I know who will be walking away with a second trophy. Gunless, incredible Atlanta tournament. He was fantastic throughout that first series. They need him now going into this uplink. Keep your eyes on Pristini as well. The boy is heating up in the response. Yeah, and if you're E United, you just gotta be sitting there over on the stage, be like, all right, we just did this. We just reverse sweep them. Let's reverse sweep them again. Just seeing that, like, how ridiculous, obviously, like, we're only in game three. You no, know, potentially could end here. But if, you know, E United is able to come back, force the game five, oh, that would be the most unlikely of scenarios that you could have picked. We talked about E United's composure. Down 0-2 in the first set, did not freak out. Even when blowing a 5-1 lead, they didn't al allow it to affect their game. I'd love to go to a listen in during this uplink, hear from the squad. How are they feeling? How is the communication to start this one? How do they turn this one around for a second time? 
Oh, they're going to be just as composed if we go to a listen. And I feel like this is a team that nothing is going to affect them at this moment in time. No, being down two maps here is the same exact thing as being down two maps in the first series. Regardless, they lose, they go home. They're coming out of the loser bracket, so it does not mean anything different to these guys. If you're an E United fan, now is the time to make some noise back against the wall. It's time to see if they can mount the comeback. We're starting things off with our cities. We just saw E United actually play this map against FaZe Clan. They end up losing it in the final seconds. So it's a great effort by FaZe Clan. We'll see Silly set up in this top window. His job is to look over the drone. He gets taken out, but quickly. You see Gunless there to take out Krim. Would have been devastating if Optic Gaming got control of their top window. It's all about the drone. If you're able to get a one-point toss in, you will take the lead. A dunk, though, is really going to give you a massive advantage here on throwback. And you're going to see the first score coming in. Skump behind Karma's first four kills will be able to tack on a one-point toss. E United, though, quickly, they come across the map. They get control of their own base. They need to push this out, though, towards mid-map. They cannot keep giving Optic Gaming that much space to operate. Well, you let Optic Gaming score in your first minute. How is the comms? How is the communication? Let's go to Gunless's microphone. I got, I got Watch out, They're gonna be right. I mean, from food, from food, from food. Our, our sidewalk, our sidewalk, our sidewalk. Right now. In the back place, in the back place. In bowling, in bowling. Sidewalk, absolute crim. That's not bowling already. Good job, Alec. We're going to take it back. Let's go. Let's go. Watch out. Top train, top train, top train. Karma, karma, karma. Nice play, nice total, play. Total, Got total, me. Total. Ray train, Ray train. He's down. Still there. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, nice one bullet. Nice one bullet. They're probably going to be. Right. They're absolutely. Sidewalk, sidewalk again. Sidewalk. 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 Absolute. 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 Sidewalk. Hey, what's up? 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 Now some don't players just don't it. like to get hype. I mean, it kind of throws their game off a little bit. They can't focus. You start playing a little bit faster. E United, just really calm, really collected. You see, they set up a nice play there. They had somebody go and bait out for Arsides. They don't even need it. He connects with a one-point throw and ties it up. If you're thinking about MVPs for this one, Skump has dropped some big numbers this week. And Karma, though, in the Grand Finals is playing fantastic. 11-5 and five start once again. On the other side, though, I highlighted Christini. He was a guy who's kind of been getting some flack from the community, saying that he hasn't had the best tournament. He's leading the way 11-8 and eight in the second best of five. He has definitely been a force to reckon with in the respawns. Yeah, day one, he had a little bit of a rough go. You saw him go on Twitter, talk a little bit about it, but he has turned things around here. Some nice shots there with the E-Rad. Skump comes flying into the top window, able to eliminate him. Gunless now, trying to work his way back towards mid-map, trying to get some type of control for E United. He's going to push through. You're going to try and bring the drone towards his bowling side. That last bullet from Gunless finds the dome of Skump, and that's going to allow him to push to the top here. His teammates getting the cuts. It's Pristini keeping Karma under control. Now Gunless trying to make the push as Pristini was hitting at the same time. The kills, though, aren't going to be scored. Instead, Optic Gaming now, after a successful defense, could push here for a drone. But first, they got to worry about Silly in their back. Yeah, and this is the issue when somebody gets into your top window. That's why I was saying on the other side, if Krim got into E United, it would have been devastating. Because look at this. Optic Gaming, they pick up three kills. They're trying to push up mid-map. One kill from Silly eliminates that push. 1-1 one, one, with a minute, four seconds still to go in our first half. Both teams looking for a, a perfect clear before they try and push up this drone. It has sat there uncontested for about two minutes. Neither team wanting to touch it quite yet. Silly still causing problems. Finally going to be removed by Formal. Well, what United is doing, they're trying to get Krim out of this back position. Currently on a three streak. He's gotten into a great spot, and he picks up two more kills. And Optic Gaming has the drone in hand now, trying to put in some more points. Scuffy with drone. He hit the first shot. Will he be able to tack on a second? 
Three defenders up. He's waiting for formal. That flank is coming through to the distraction. Is there the interception though? Coming in. Arsity snatching it out of the sky. 20 seconds left. This could be a counter push. And we'll see what RC decides to do here. He has no teammate support. He looks like he's going to go for a really long range shot. Falls a little bit short there, Chris. And it looks like going into the half, we're going to have a 1-1 game. 1-1 one, one after five minutes. These two squads so evenly matched. But you have to keep in mind, Optic Gaming is one point and five minutes away from becoming your Dallas champions. Will they be able to secure a lead? Or will E United push this one the distance? E yeah, United has to be really careful here at this opening break. Cannot afford to go man down and let Optic push up. You know, Optic, they start rolling. They start picking up kills in your base. These games of uplink can start to spiral. Texas, make some noise. We need your energy, boys. It's time. Five more minutes for Optic Gaming. Will they be able to take the lead? Formal trying to stop the push here from United. Picks up two. Looking for a third. It's Silly behind the box. Silly has been so good at buying his squad time when they are down a man. And Formal is going to be looking for him once again. The drone should move up after this next kill. Can they find Gunless? Not quite yet. It's going to be E United on the push. And Optic Gaming is going to have to set up on defense. Let's go to an Optic listen in. How do they stop this push? Two more, two more, two more. Back door. They're going, mid, going mid door. One, one, yeah, they're going to go mid. Well, mid door, mid door. Middle, middle. Silly weak. One's, one's, one's on our point. One's on our point. Oh, shit. Three, three, three there. Three there. Three there. They're all there. They're all there, Seth. Try and slide. That's out. Silly absolute, silly yeah, absolute. Watch that side, side, watch that side. Barn, bottom barn, watch that side. Watch that barn. Watch that bottom barn. Bottom barn, bottom barn. Green, 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 green. I got bottom barn, silly. Move ball, move ball, let's go. Move ball, guys. Move ball, guys. Go for it, go for it. Green side, what cost you? Green side, what cost you? I can't see my hands. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Train, you went low train, you went low train. I'm fine. Damon, come out. I shoot up. I'm in statue, watch that block. Watch that block. Weak block, weak block. Falling in block. Weak block. All right, all good. One stop, one stop. One stop, one stop. One stop, one stop. I said, weak, weak. Red alley. Red fences and ball. Or bus, sorry. I don't know where the bus guy went. Red fences and bus. There's three, three right, three right. One guy mid, one guy mid. Watch out, watch out. There's two right, two right. Watch out for red. Watch out for red. Missile, missile. What's our green side off? I got green. Low green side off. Low green side off. I got two off. Really weak. Up to the base. Up to the base. Go, 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 go. I was going to reset. I got a bus. I got a bus. What a difference in energy when you listen to the communication from both teams there seems to be a little bit more momentum a little bit more panic actually in some of the voices you look at the numbers here karma is dropping bombs 22 and 13 on a three streak formal though has been shut down just nine and 19 united leads by two with three to go and usually you hear faster comms from teams that play at a faster pace you just kind of put more emphasis on certain things where you need to go right away that's why you see the drastic difference between these two teams when you go into listen-ins. It's going to be Arsides getting on top of Boss. He's going to push straight through. And he's in a great position to try and help get another one-point play on the board for United. Gunless already at 25 kills is going to pop the camo as the drone runs through. Fifth point now on the board for United. Will they be able to hold on and force another hard point? 2.30 to go. On your screen is silly. They're still set up, trying to rally in, but the kills haven't been scored yet. Now two have fallen. It's the ERADs coming up big for Pristini and Gunless. Here comes the drone in the hands of Arsides. And I cannot remember the last time we have watched Gunless when he used active camo, did not get points out of it. Just so good with that ability. Pristini picks up two. They get a one point throw in. Arsides earns himself overdrive. You can always use that in the last seconds of a game, obviously, to get thrown. We saw United actually, they tried to use overdrive to get thrown and throw it forward for some yards at a beginning opening play. But you will not need that unless Optic Gaming puts five more points on the board to force OT. Arsides didn't get a kill there, but that is just a testament to this man's skill and the reaction time. Here's someone behind him. Windmills away is able to stay alive. Optic sends two people to go kill him. Meanwhile, his teammates are grabbing the drone, and that could have been a one point toss. Crim6 will scoop it up from the floor. Can Optic turn this into points? Well, you know, they throw it over towards the left-hand side, obviously, get it out of your base. You have nobody over there, though, to try and make a push. And you still have players from E United pushing. And they're going to be able to get the drone off. Pristini not able to get through the doorway. That was a huge That could have been bad. Stuck on the glue, put in the doorway by Optic Gaming. E United still up big, though. They have a five-point advantage. Optic, just 70 seconds remain here in game number three. They have a 2-0 lead in our final best of five of CWL Dallas. But I have a feeling we're about to see another hard point, Matt.
Yeah, you got Scum pushing forward there. He's able to get one off the spawn, but you just look at how far all the members of Optic Gaming are. I mean, nobody there with drone, nobody there for follow-up. You're not going to get any points out of that. Just let's United get right back to mid-map. Chris really does nothing for the team. At this point, if you're Optic Gaming, you have to get a clean sweep, kill all players from E United set up, and run this drone in over and over again. The overdrive has to come out. Formal leads the way with the two-piece. Will they be able to put in a dunk? Formal is on the flank. He's going to pick up the last defender. Krim is going to put this one in. Player number five, Karma, has a camo as well. This is doable, but they know there's going to be a player on the flank. Karma has the camo. He's going to get oh, this man. dunk in. It's a one-point game after this one goes through. This is going to come down to that gunfight in the middle of the map. You do have Arsity still alive with overdrive. He actually could pick up the drone and get out of the way, but with only one point needed for Optic Gaming, they the throw pass. the drone over. He has camo. Karma going for the one. Yes! With one second left, Karma hits the toss. What did Optic Gaming just do? Five points in your final 70 seconds. And I was actually contemplating if Karma needed a pop camo when the drone was coming down the second time. There was a player in top window but he saves it. They're able to get the pass over the second time the drone comes down. Just at the end of his camo, he's able to pick it up. Now we're going right into OT. So we saw e United do against FaZe is they had overdrive here. They were able to pick up the drone and they, they threw it over to where Gunless is on that top side of the map. This is so intense right now. It's stopwatch overtime. Who is going to have the faster score? Arsides hits the overdrive, the saving the payload. He's going for the one point toss. Not going to happen. Off of the roof, shots in the back, and he was just about two inches too far to the left there, Matt. He had enough time to make it around that corner, Chris, and he would have had an easy one-point throw, potentially even a two-point play there. Maybe some nerves settling in for E United, but they wipe the floor without the game, and, and they have the control of the base. This is a dunk. If Pristini can stop him, there's the first pick. The dunk goes through. 45 seconds is the time to beat. It's a very good time there for E United. We'll have to check on abilities for Optic Gaming here going into the second half. And I want to remind you guys what has happened at the start of each half. It's always E United coming out on top of the opening gunfight. With 45 seconds left for Optic Gaming, you have two chances. But you better make this first one count. Will they be able to stop E United? Because if E United even gets a single toss, this game is over. We will see a game four. And it looks like Pristini, the only one with ability in his reactive armor. He pops it, goes to the middle of the map with the ERAD. Smart play. He's going to push forward. E United going for the dagger here in game three. And here comes Silly. One point toss, no interception. They are going to seal the deal after an, a heroic effort for Optic Gaming to force overtime. E United holds strong. This team does not crumble. Just absolutely crazy. It's about 50 seconds left. Optic down five. They tie it up. I look to my left. I see everybody in production. They got their hands in the air. Everybody wondering what the hell is going on. And then it's crazy. We go right back in to overtime. You can see the play here. It's Krim over the top. Karma picks it up, gets it off with two seconds left and connects with that one point throw. Forces OT, regardless, it's E-United winning game number three, though. They say 10,000 hours of anything, and you will become an expert. Optic Gaming has put their time into Call of Duty, and how many times do you think they have practiced that exact play? Uh, I don't know if they practice that ever. I mean, maybe the one point, you know, the throw over the top, and you're able to pick it up, but I do not know if you practice that with that much time left on the clock to put, you know, five points up in about 40 seconds. Not many people are able to do that. I had to tuck my shirt back in. I jumped out of it during that last half, but in the end, overtime, United. They score with the dunk, they finish with the one-point toss. We have another game four. You avoid the comeback from Optic Gaming. You're right back in this one, and you're one respawn away from forcing a another second game, five, game man. five. That would be absolutely out of control. And I actually thought, personally, when you saw RCs use overdrive and not connect with that one-point throw, banks it off the side, I thought maybe, okay, this is where things unravel for United. No Optic, the room is going crazy. They got everybody behind them. Not the case. They slay out yet again. They put more points on the board. Actually, it ends up turning out better. They get the dunk there, 45 seconds. Still a very good time. 
and you save that reactive armor going into the second half. You saw a tremendous play by Pristini at the beginning to help put it away. Absolutely. Pristini has been on point. But the man I think is going to earn MVP is Gunless. Look at the numbers again from game number three. Look at some of the stats this man has brought to the table for his squad throughout the weekend. He gets the job done with the K-Bar. He runs it with the E-Rad. The camo plays, though, have been the best. And honestly, it's the best payload you can have, Matt. They trust Gunless to be effective with it every single time. Yeah, I mean, he's a tremendous player in all game modes. I mean, we see it in Uplink time and time again. He's able to put two-point plays on the board for the team with active camo, search and destroy, went absolutely huge in game five. A any situation, this guy's great. Regardless of game mode, regardless of how much pressure and things are on the line, Gunless always shows up. Let's all take a moment as the players get a short rest as we will go into our rig draft. Let us know on Twitter, who do you think deserves MVP from watching this series alone? Optic Gaming versus E United, eight incredible players. They have all taken turns going off on the main stage. Matt, is there one guy out of these eight that you'd be leaning towards? I, I don't think you can either go, you know, until you know a winner, I don't think you can pick. Know who your control freak MVP is. And just to reiterate, this is a 2-1 lead for Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming takes the first two maps in this series. E United takes that uplink to force a game four hardpoint on Retaliation. Here we go. It's Retaliation. Long lines of sight. The NV4 can be so dangerous. The ERAD, though, also could have a place. Pristini, super effective with it. Gunless was using it most of throwback for uplink. What is the game plan for these eight players? E United needing this game to force another search and destroy. If you're an Optic Gaming fan, though, you are hoping you can finish it right here. It's time to get it started. Retaliation Hardpoint kicks off right now. Yeah, Arsenides versus Formal is going to be a big matchup in this one. Both players now running that NV4 for their respective teams. I think if Arsenides can put together a good game, we could very well see another game five. And no, not going to see much ERAD use on this one. Very difficult with the long sight lines on Retaliation. Maybe in the hotel hallway, you'll see one player go over towards it, try and get some good time there. But mostly we're going to see K-Bar and NV4 here. A whole lot of K-Bars. You saw Pristini with an NV4 Formal brought one out as well and Pristini is going to get a pick now he's going to try and go for the low wall run staying hidden he's got a buddy with him the buddy system not working out quite yet crim six scump formal and karma all four players from optic gaming in the kill feed and finally they're on the scoreboard with 17 seconds still to go the next hard point's going to be huge. It's going to go from Lower Street to Back Cathedral all the way to the other side of the map towards Broken. And when you get that Lower Street, you can usually set yourself up for some good time. You see where Pristini is spawning? He's going to have to take a very long route to get towards that Lower Street, which is popping up right now. And a lot of people forget to challenge Optic Gaming here on the Lower Street. If you look back at some of the previous games, Optic has outscored their opponents by up to 90 seconds on this hill alone. So it's going to be key for e United to keep the pressure on their opposition. Pristini, three and four, is going to be trying to push through. Crim6 is waiting for him. Arsenis distracts. Silly comes in. Optic is out of the hill, and it's e United reclaiming their lead. It's like those little plays, Chris, that make such a big difference. Arsenis up on that top flat easily could have challenged Crim6. Decides to just pin him there, allows Silly to come from the side and pick up an uncontested two-piece. Everybody knows Optic Gaming, and pretty soon E United will be a household name. Let's listen in with our Atlanta champions. Take it in bed, take it in bed. I'll slow down hell. I spawned oh, to They're spawning behind you, spawning behind you. Two last, two last, two last. They're both one shot. They're both one shot. Good, good win, Justin. Good job, Justin. Stay last, stay last. Spawn street, spawn street. Watch out, watch out, Crim and Hill. Absolute, absolute Hill, Crim. Go, go, go. Back, back, back. Okay, 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 in the back, in the back, one shot. Back. Karma, Karma is the one, one's on the tank, one's on the tank. Good job, good job, good job. Tank, 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 tank still. Tank, formal. Formal's on the tank, he's slid on me. One shot, one shot, one shot, dead. Good job, good job. One shot, one shot. Please, complete. Tank, 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 tank. Come dead. One shot, good job. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Good break. Good job, let's go, baby. I'm going main, I'm going Good break, that's exactly what we just saw here. It's our cities on your screen as they set up for the cathedral. Two players pushing across the bridge. Silly is there. Pristini answering back as well. Optic 
They still have a lead, but it's E-United storming right back. I just find it funny, you know, we're in that listen in and you see Skump pick up two big kills. And usually you'll see a team like Cyrus, oh man, like he's going to be able to break it. You don't hear any reaction. Then the next person just comes up, picks him up. He's like, oh, I got Skump. It's like they are not phased by anything. E-United, good break and hold on Cathedral, but allows off to game and he gets it up here on Broken. They're going to make a lot of this time back. Formal has been spotted. Pristini not gonna fire. They have no idea he's here. Can't finish off Karma. He ducks out just in time. Pristini gets the first kill. He's waiting for his teammates. Playing the safe, still looking for Karma, but Karma also playing patiently, is waiting on Scump and Krim. Ah, oh, that is such a huge play from Pristini though. I mean, he gets into this spot. Optic Gaming has absolutely no idea. Puts a tag in. Karma goes to finish off. Formal inside of the hard point and E United gets control. And when a hill that'll look like Optic Game and they rotate early, they're gonna break the game open here. One play by Pristini throws it right back in E United's favor. And Arsenis got to the top of this orange bus just in time to find Optic Gaming's next flood of response. 15 points remain here in the broken building. You talked about Cathedral, you talked about Broken, how they're gonna be the keys to victory on this map. E United broke Optic setup twice to get themselves not only back in this this game, but up to about a 30-point advantage. And that's why it's hard. You can't pick a control freak MVP just based off stats. I mean, right now, Pristini, he's 9 and 10. But that one kill got that whole time for E United. It's just those little kills that make such a big impact on the game. Absolutely. We saw Ake's tweets earlier saying, you know, Everyone said Karma was arguably the best player in Black Ops 3. His KD, not always a testament. It is the dirty work that helps you win championships. Pristini with a big play in our first half. But now it's time to turn our attention to the second half. How is this one going to play out? Optic Gaming is on match point. They currently trail by about 50 points, though, as E United is trying to force a second Game 5. Oh, and this is a ton of time for E United. And, you know, if things get dicey, you're going to look back at this time in the hotel hallway, and it may end up saving them because usually we don't see a ton of time taken here in hotel hallway but e united doing a fantastic job locking it down giving themselves a little bit of a buffer chris if they don't get cathedral or broken christini and arsenis the twin brothers they have their family in the crowd here tonight both dropping double 14s gunless the rock star from the earlier games the search and destroy phenom pulling out the Scarab, he's able to take out Karma, still he's there to trade out Crim6. So once again, it's E United first to the hill. It's their hill to lose. E United will not go away. They reverse sweep Optic in our first series in the Grand Finals. And they are one map away here from forcing a Game 5. Skump peeks in the hotel hallway, takes out one, trying to get back towards Bridge. 25 seconds left. If you're E United, I think about going towards the lower market here. I mean. 15 seconds, you want to get set up in lower market. You want to make sure you get that market area, that left-hand side of your mini-map. You cannot afford to lose Cathedral and Broken. Keep your eyes on player number two. That is Arsides, who was so strong on the deck the first time it went to the lower street. Will he be able to set up once again? Scump on your screen for Optic Gaming is going to be hunting. And Arsides has moved out. Pristini, though, charging in, picks up Karma. Scump is going to have his hands full. Three players all coming in. Gets the first pick on Pristini. Sees the second. Formal gets the call out. Cleans that up. Finds a third. Stronghold for Optic. But at the end of the day, Gunless is the first into the hill. E United spawning out. Gunless needs help. And Gunless actually gets out with his life. He takes out Scump. Dives right back into the garage. Karma on the hunt. Not able to take him out. A big play there by Gunless. It's going to give E United another 15 or 20 seconds. This venue is silent right now. Everyone on the edge of their seats. E United up by 50. And they're going to score the last 13 here. Unless Optics, Crim6, and Skump can get the kill. Crim gets one. Skump is going to flood through. He'll pick up the final five points. But that's nothing. You are down big. You got to set up for the Cathedral. And already, that's exactly where E United is. Yeah, now you mean you saw the rotation come in perfectly. Gunless cutting players off with the bridge. This is this map for Optic Game, and they got to break Cathedral here. As Matt said, this is the map. You look at the scoreboard, unless Optic can test, they could win it right here. You see RC's rotating over towards Market. It's been so good with the NV4 right now. Tags one player, searching for it, waiting to come out and challenge. 
As I say, it's great with the MV4. He misses an entire clip. That's a back smack, though, yeah. man. Come on, how's Karma survive that one? Silly is there to reinforce, and right away, Arsenis gets the respawn, pushes to the middle of the map. They now call in the score streak. The Scarab is on the floor. 235. Optic has not been able to contest once. This could all and be I, over right I, here. I actually wonder if Optic thinks that United cannot win on this because they rotate all the way towards Broken. They're not really paying attention to the clock. And Two, United can... one, 250, 138. E United blowing out Optic Gaming in the second half of game number four. What is happening? This is a 10 game grand final here at CWL Dallas presented by the PlayStation 4. That last hill, I need to go back and watch that again because Optic Gaming, they rotate out towards Broken and I was like, they know they need to contest this, right? Like, the e United has enough time to be able to win the game here. And you saw one player go towards it, everybody else go towards Broken, and then the game just ends. It's a really weird finish there, but e United takes game four, 250-138, forces another game five. I can't believe that United held Optic Gaming out of that final hill. Here are some of the biggest plays, though. Pristini, you highlighted it in the first round of rotations. That's what kept United in the game. They build up a big lead, and they never look back. The gun was played down at that lower street, gave them the opportunity to get to the Cathedral, and then that's where they sealed the deal, Matt. Now they are one game away from becoming our Dallas champions. Can E United make it happen? This is going to be a big one. I mean, just look at Grave and Broken, Chris. I mean, just huge disparities, actually. Nope, on the last three hills, all of them in favor of E United. 98 points on Grave, 47 on Broken, and 32 in Hotel Hallway. Sends the game in E United's favor forcing another game five. It's been back and forth, back and forth. We're going the distance. Game five is coming up when we return live from Texas. <sighs> These better not be too bad. From at Jack Cullen, 195, Courage JD, did you sign up for Fat Camp yet? Okay, listen, I know I'm fat, okay? I've dealt with it my whole... Cut it, cut the video. Uh, <laughs> at Jing said, you're like the Diet Coke version of Krim. What? Krim is like that off-brand food lion crap, and I'm a nice Dr. Pepper. Oh, your baby mama fave? Is that how you use it? Fav? Fave? I don't know. I can't really see Mr. X as a caster. I always seen him as a cheerleader for Cole slash EG. I was a pretty damn good cheerleader. I decided I wanted to cast because I thought I'd be like one of the best at it. Did that too. Doesn't seem like you really have done much. Uh, I could cook up some fries if the amount of grazing gunless. <laughs> I'd probably agree. I wonder if the fries would taste good or not. Esports fan, esports underscore fan 007. You don't have a man's voice, and this unsettles me. I know I don't. It's it's completely fine. I, I live with this voice. It's I, your your opinion don't matter to me. This tweet is from at Pacman's mom. You are a bald, drunk, urine-stained old man. I don't think it's a real account, but that's very hurtful. Pacman, I'm blaming you. Oh God, everybody's gonna listen to this. <laughs> Side note, Silly is still trash and gained zero respect for me this weekend. His teammates did great though. I'll, I'll let him rock on that one. Sage underscore is underscore live. Rated is just salty. He has nothing like Clay does to show for his career. What a low tier, ha ha. Clay still has nothing besides gaming in his life, so it's all good. <laughs> I'm CBB. Are MLG Puckett in formal dating? Like this dude Puckett won't stop talking about him. He has the best stats in the game. He's the player on your screen. It's my job to tell you what he's doing. At Ral Daddy, Clayster is the only one on face holding them back from having the fleekiest hair as a team. Homie needs to jealous <laughs> back or something. Well, Ral Daddy, peep the cut. I don't want to hear you talking smack no more. Come see me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are moments away from the second game five in our grand final. This has been one to truly remember. I I've casted some of the greatest grand finals in Call of Duty history I've been lucky enough to, but this could take the cake. Merck, thoughts on this game five? I, I, I don't have many thoughts. It's gonna be a crazy <laughs> one. You know Optic are thinking about it in the back of the head about getting reverse swept, but game five has been their bread and butter all event long, so. I'm gonna stick with the green wall. Momo, it feels like deja vu. Will it be deja vu? We've been sat here for a long time looking at this game, but going into this, United, they must be thinking the complete opposite. They can do this, they've done it before, why not? TP, does United do it again? This reminds me of one of those marathons, best of 11s from back in the day, <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with United. I think they're gonna do it. You're gonna say United. I'm with TP. Two E Uniteds for a potential reverse sweep. We cannot wait for this game five. Without further ado, let's send it down to our casters for game five. Thank you so much, Benson. Just one game left here in Texas. And this has been the greatest grand finals we have seen in competitive Call of Duty going all the way to game five in the first set. E United clutching up, reverse sweeping Optic Gaming. Now we see the second game five. This one decides who raises the trophy. It's like just as a fan of like competitive Call of Duty, like this is just like the craziest scenario you could ever imagine. No, United reverse sweeps them the first time. Like, oh man, they you know they showed a lot of resolve. We've seen this before, though. A team, you know, they beat Optic in the first series. Optic comes out, storms them in the second one. They go up 2-0. You're like, it can't happen again. They win Game Three, last second overtime. They dominate them in Game Four. There, we find ourselves right back to a search and destroy here in Game Five. An interesting note: this is the only search and destroy they did not play at the Atlanta final because it was Game Five in the first series. So Optic 3-0s, and they never actually get to score search and destroy. We'll finally find out who is the better Scorch squad when it comes to Search and Destroy. Couldn't be more pressure. $200,000 up for grabs this weekend. Who's taking home the biggest chunk? Is it E United? Is it Optic Gaming? If you're out there in the crowd, it's time. Are you ready for the final game of CWL Dallas? And I tell you what, Chris, if I'm on E United, and I'm silly, I'm thinking about that tweet that Formal had right after the finals in Atlanta. And I'm going as hard as I possibly can here. In game five of our second series, it'll be E United starting things off on offense. E United winning Atlanta, that was two tournaments ago. Paris though, it was all optic gaming. They cruised to a championship title there. This has been their toughest uh, challenge yet here when it comes to Call of Duty. And we're gonna have to see Gunless in the opening fight. Watches a teammate fall, looking to trade back, but he can't get there in time. I was looking at the minimap, Matt, and you have to look out for Optic Gaming to rotate at any moment. They've threatened to do it twice so far. Yeah, Prasini tries to go aggressive into A, has no teammate follow-up, so he quickly dies. And now E United, you can see they're just kind of scrambling here for a pick. As soon as Gunless sees Formal, tries to challenge him right away. Players dropping in the middle of the map. Round one in favor of Optic Gaming. You know, Scump is talking about how awesome this crowd is, how big they have been all weekend long. The crowd was silent after that last game. This is a big first round win. Everyone waking back up here in the venue. Optic Gaming starting to generate a bit of momentum. United, though, they handle the pressure better than any team we have seen. Trying to answer back with a strong defensive hold of their own. All eight players running directly at each other. Let's see how this one plays out. And Karma's gonna be the first one for OG. He's gonna get tagged up, backs out from the site. Knows that this pressure is coming from E United. But back-to-back -back rounds, Optic draws first blood. Formal with two, Crim six, keeping them alive. And it's just Silly left, up. and this one is done. Can't get the one versus two. Optic Gaming jumping out to a 2-0 lead. Now we have another big round coming up for E United. Their backs have been against the wall numerous times. But the fans getting behind Optic Gaming here in the venue. They're starting to get rolling. They know what is at stake here in our second game five. And now with E United on offense, Chris. If I'm Optic Gaming, I bet they don't go towards A. I would have actually stacked B here, because you know, obviously going over towards A, a little bit more of a ballsy call. Right. You do not expect them to do that being down two rounds. It's pretty similar, though, to their first round, where they just set up evenly, then rotate to where the action's going to be. 
It's Pristini getting first blood. Skump and Karma, though, trade right back. So man advantage to Optic here. RCD's on your screen, free aiming that doorway. There was a player in window, and he will find Skump. So a two on two. Silly and RCD's up against Formal and Karma. And RCD's going to get one. Karma going to stay alive. It's a 1v1 now. Karma. And Karma's able to win it. Just when you thought E United was going to put a round on the board, Karma clutches up, wins the 1v2. What a job there by Karma. Big props to Arsenis and the work he did in that round. But Karma once again, Captain Clutch coming up big. We're going into round four. It's three straight for Optic Gaming. E United needs to start answering back. We're on board with Karma, though, as he is going to lead the charge. Bomb in hand once again for Optic Gaming. They're once again looking for the drill. And E United, they're putting a lot on the line here. They put a ton of pressure back towards mid mount. They're going to have to rotate all the way back. See a smoke coming out here for Karma. It's going to block that line of sight there by observation deck. Potentially, you move the bomb up, you get it down here. Karma bobbing and weaving, trying to bait out some shots, looking for a first challenger. There it is. He's going to punish Pristini. Find Silly as well. Karma, 6-1 and one at this point. Make it 7-1. and one. He's looking for the ace on Arsenis. And there it is. What a slide kill to finish this one off. Karma was perfect that round. And Optic Gaming goes up 4-0. Karma, he actually played incredible in the first game five, Search and Destroy. They end up losing it in that round 11, showing up here in another big moment for Optic Gaming. You can hear the crowd behind them. They do have active camo to use here. Yep. Maybe you use it, you go up 5-0. Kind of put the nail in the coffin. Karma looking exactly like Gunless from the first game five. What is going to happen here, though? As it's E United on the attack, the bomb has stalled all the way out. It's back at Cave. They are taking their time getting to B. Optic Gaming, they fainted early, but they all pulled back after using the Scarab. Well, it's going to be hard now because they have the players going into observation deck. And here's the camera play I was talking about from Karma. He's going to be able to get Pristini. Oh, picks no. up a second as well. Gets fully streaked out. Optic Gaming what? running through E United here in game five. One round away from a 6 0 victory and another championship. Are they going to close it out like this, Matt? Is this how you claim your Dallas trophy? No, you have these streaks going into this next round. We've seen E United come back from some crazy scenarios. This would be the absolute craziest down 5 0. Streaks on the other side. You have nothing to work with. One word, Matt. Full sail. We'll see if it happens again. This time, though, it's Crim6 and Karma wearing optic jerseys. And we're going to start this one up with Karma. Here come the score streaks. The bombs are coming down. They're going to force back everyone from E United. You, look, he just goes for a ping there, just trying to get some vision for the rest of his teammates. Now the Trinity Rocket going to come down. It's going to allow Skump to get one here. Karma just trying to see if he can pick up one kill with this. He tries to drop it towards the backside of Observation. Does not pick up one. It's going to be Crim6 picking up another. Gunless is out. Silly is gone. Just the twins left. Down goes Arsenis. Down goes Pristini. It's all off the gaming. Gaming closes this one out in basically three minutes and 30 seconds. Karma with a ridiculous final performance. And look, they hand him the trophy right away. In the first game five, he was incredible. They end up losing it. The biggest moment for Optic Gaming in the second best of five. Karma goes huge for Optic Gaming, giving them the championship. What a tournament, the greatest finals we have seen in competitive Call of Duty. And at the end of it all, it is Optic Gaming coming out on top with the trophy. We have Courage on the floor with our winners. Ladies and gentlemen, your CWL Dallas Open champions, Optic Gaming.
I just watched. I'm tired. I can't imagine how you guys feel right now. You're finally back on top. MLG champions. Seth, is that the craziest match you've ever played in your career? What were the emotions like going into that game five? That was a ridiculous match. Got, almost got reverse sweep two times in a row in grand finals. That would have been absolutely heartbreaking, but you know, thanks to my man Damon over there. He definitely made some major plays. Everyone getting involved on this team. You guys came into this weekend, you have a 20 plus map win streak. You win the last event. We don't know where this is gonna go. You have your ups and downs. What are the improvements right now that Optic Gaming need to make moving forward going into this Global Pro League? Um, honestly, I think our uplink was a little bit shaky against them. I think we had a good uplink event besides them. They were just playing really, really well. I mean, granted, the maps were extremely close. Um, but yeah, we had a couple weak maps that we didn't have in ESWC, so probably just try to polish off a couple of the maps that we uh, struggled on here. Makes a lot of sense. Now, I do have to say, E United deserves some major props for the series that they just played. You guys are four of the largest following members of the Call of Duty scene, four of the longest standing veterans. Any words for these young guys for the performance they put on so far in Infinite Warfare? I mean, they're an amazing team. They're very good players, really good guys. I like all of them, and uh, that was one hell of a match, boys. It most certainly was one hell of a match. We know our champions, but every victory, there must be a control freak MVP. It has gone back and forth. Folks, make some noise. Your control freak MVP is scum. The numbers he puts up, the slang he brings to this team, nearly unmatched in competitive Call of Duty. Really, any of these guys you could have made a case for. Congratulations again to Optic Gaming, to the people in the venue, to the people watching at home. Do not go anywhere. We are going to have ourselves a press conference after this, but uh-oh, uh-oh. Seth's calling for the mic, I gotta listen. I just wanna say thank you to all of you guys. Uh, this was the best event that we've had in terms of support in, in a really, really long time. So you guys made us feel amazing. Um, thank you guys, thank you. Seth, they've been crowned champions. Crowd, you guys have been crowned champions too. Give it up again, Optic Gaming, your CWL Dallas Open champions. Optic Gaming clutch up when they need to. It looked from a few moments as if a double reverse sweep was about to happen. Yeah, but, but I, I just got my new score streak badge after that prediction. Oh, here we go. Feel real good. I got another, <laughs> gold, not, got another gold on the profile. Of course you do. I don't think many people would have predicted that. That's for sure. Uh, I, we have to talk about karma. We, we have to. Game five. It looks as if for a few moments that game is going to get taken completely out of their control. And all of a sudden, Momo, karma just starts making play after play after play. And that's such a try. I believe he finished 12 and 1. That is an unbelievable performance from him. 12 and 1, but just, just think that was in six rounds. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about Gunless <laughs> dropping 18 in 11, but that is six rounds. He put his team on the back, on his back there, and it, it just shows, you know, when you're a player which takes the responsibility of something like camo, you've got to turn up. And, and Damon, that that doesn't go on a leaderboard. Yes, your KD might change a little bit, but that is Captain Clutch. Karma just took that away from them. Completely agree. And I guess the bigger question, TP, is you can play fantastic Call of Duty for what felt like two hours there in that grand final, but if you take your foot off the pedal for just one moment, Optic Gaming will punish you. How do you beat this team? They're just so good right now. Uh, I guess you just have to execute on all those little things. There are situations that United could have really uh, took it to Optic, but so could many other teams here at this entire tournament. Right. They should have. They could have lost and never did. And then we get to that final map. It's such, a, such an Optic Gaming map <laughs> five, right? They get a little bit of momentum and they basically just keep going. They put the foot down, 
that's it. It's done. Absolutely steamrolled through. I mean, that's going to give them a lot of confidence heading into the Global Land League, of course, Merck. And I guess that is the question. What is the roof for this Optic Gaming squad? Are they currently at their full potential? Or could they maybe even improve even more? I mean, they can always improve with these four players on the roster. You, you know what they're capable of, but I, I mean, it's just all these guys. I mean, Karma, Krim6, you know, next series, he could be the MVP. Who knows what these guys... You never know if they're truly going to hit their ceiling. I, I will say, though, there was a lot of series where teams are going to look back at this event and say, as Tyler said, we could have beat these guys. They do have to polish up some of their mistakes. True. I was going to say, uh, you know, it, it sounds pretty savage uh, after what we've just seen Optic Gaming do. 6-0, win the whole tournament. But they, they need to, I think they need to improve a lot, to be honest. I think, you know, LG took them to a map five. We see E-United take them down. That could have gone either way, of course. They, they close it out. Uh, I think there's a lot that they can improve on, but to say that about a team that wins a championship says a lot about Optic Gaming for very me. Very true. Uh, and of course, Tiba, at the very end there, we, we saw Skump, the control freak MVP. What a weekend he has had. Oh, it's unbelievable stuff. You know, we've been obviously highlighting a lot of formal right. Has Skump sort of fallen off? Well, <laughs> there's the king. He's back on top. He has his crown. There it Ooh. is. Look at those stats right there. And it, the search and destroy. Unbelievable stuff from Optic Gaming as a whole. Yes, you can see Skump stats right there. But all of these guys, you know, since Formal has sort of taken over that in-game leader sort of role for them, calling shots, I'm sure they take turns doing it. But overall, something has switched for these guys. Unbeatable. Yep, very true. A fantastic event for Optic Gaming and a fantastic event from Scum. But Merck, I think TP kind of touched on, on, on the key there. Every single one of these players could be an MVP in their own right. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm sure we're going to receive a lot of criticism. <laughs> you, heard the, you, you heard the crowd that they wanted Karma to be the MVP. But remember, MVP, it's about the whole tournament. This is and, true. And Scum played exceptionally well the entire single tournament. Yes, he did. Uh, and that's going to be absolutely everything from the studio for now. We can send it down to Jack with our press conference. Over to you, Jack. Thank you very much, Benson. Yes, we are down here for the Champions Press Conference. This is a new tradition we've started in recent events. The goal of the press conference, hear from the team a little bit more, let them wind down for a brief moment after that victory. They've now got the trophies. We'll explain the scenario. Optic Gaming coming to this event, being the last major CWL champions at the CWL Paris Open. They climb right on through that winner's bracket until they face some adversity in that grand final. E United, our CWL Atlanta Open champions, take the first best of five off of them in a reverse sweep. They go to a second best of five and nearly do it again. Optic Gaming are crowned the CWL Dallas Open champions and now sit here with two straight major event victories back to back. Gentlemen, typically we take questions from the press, but this crowd's a little bit crazy here in Dallas, so I'm gonna handle most of this one up here. We've got some questions from Twitter as well. To start off, we heard from Skump in that post interview, but I gotta hear from the other guys. Krim, we'll start with you. 30th major land championship, if I'm not mistaken. Where does this one rank? What'd you ask? What'd you ask? Where, do, where does this one rank for you? Uh, definitely top five. Okay. Definitely top five, just because of that last series, uh, the crowd here. You know, I actually, I love Texas. I, I grew up in Seattle thinking everyone in Texas was a cowboy, but I love this place. I love this place. There you go, it's official. Krim loves Texas. I'm sure Damon does too. Karma, you had some ridiculous clutch plays. Everyone's name was in the MVP, Control Freak MVP discussion. Is this all you making those plays possible? Do you get some communication from your teammates? What's going through your mind in those plays? I mean, yeah, of course, uh, you know, my teammates are communi communicating everything to me. Uh, I don't know, dude, going in, like, they played a really good series. You know, I, I hope nobody takes anything away from United because, uh, like, those games were as close as they could get. And I don't know, dude, I just had a really good feeling going in the last map. <laughs> well, it showed with the 6-0 in the end, uh, formal, you know how good you've been playing as of late. It's been the major discussion in the Call of Duty scene. Are you the best player right now? Throughout that entire series, it was going back and forth with the Control Freak MVP for you. With how things are currently going in Infinite Warfare, what makes it possible for you to put up the numbers you do? What do your teammates do to make your job easier? Uh, honestly, I'm just putting a lot of time into this game. I'm trying not to get complacent. I just want to keep winning and keep winning. And it seems like we're kind of all on the same page with that. So I think this year is going to uh, be a great year for us. Absolutely. Now, we had some questions come in from Twitter. We've got time for one. This is for everybody, basically. This is from at Eric Ramos 263. 
Who is your favorite player to go up against and why? Skump, we'll start with you. Oh, why are you going to put me on a spot? Ah, okay. uh, uh, maybe Clayster. Just because of that long, deep-rooted rivalry, you know? He's been a great, great friend of mine, but in game, we are some fierce enemies, so probably Clayster. Awesome. Krim? Patty P. <laughs> Eggs. It has to be Pat. Uh, I'd say probably my former Impact teammates, yeah. Some good rivalry Doesn't there Doesn't happen too often, though, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and formal, finally, you. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Gunless. He is really hard to play against, and he played a hell of a series. So I'm gonna say Gunless. He's really fun to play against. Wow, a major compliment there from Formal. I know this crowd is the majority Optic Gaming fans, but can you guys give it up for the performance we saw from United, please? Thank you. Much deserved. Much deserved. Well. I think that about settles it. We started this weekend with 100 plus teams, and now we know our champions. It's Optic Gaming again, sitting atop competitive Call of Duty. From everybody behind the scenes, from everybody involved, thank you to the players, to the community, and to the crowd here in Dallas. This has been a Call of Duty event to remember. Thank you so much for watching the CWL Dallas Open. We'll see you for the kickoff of the CWL Global Pro League, April 20th, 2017. Goodbye. <laughs>